sure seem to like him. He can't keep his lame pretty boy single on the shelf. Is out her credit card. What do you say we go out after school? I'll even let you buy me a non fat latte. You will? Okay. Sorry, Clover. Oh. Damon's already got plans after school. He's going to the mall with yours truly. Oh, yeah, that's right. The mall. <gasps> well, no big deal. I was only trying to do him a favor because he's new around here. Besides, wouldn't you rather hang out with us than some dim-witted musician? Yeah, I guess so. Only, I just can't help liking Damon. Call me crazy, but I just have this thing for musicians. I've gotta find a way to get his attention off of Mandy and on to me. to drop in. Nice for some of us. Ricky Mathis? Never heard of him. That's because he's an overnight musical sensation. In fact, as of today, he's only released one single, the optimistically titled Rock Legend. Which makes it even more unsettling that there have been reports of similar occurrences all around the globe. Something's up, we're just not sure what. So, where do we fit in? Your mission is to go undercover as the opening act on his world tour and find out exactly what it is about Ricky Mathis that makes his fans so... fanatical. You mean, we get to be in a real band? A real pretend one. This is so perfect! When Damon finds out, he'll toss Mandy like a day-old muffin and come running straight to me. He'll see me as his musical equal. I'll be irresistible! Now, all we need is a name. Actually, ladies, we've already taken care of your name. We're called the Spies? That is so lame. Yeah, totally unimaginative. It was my idea. Oh! <laughs> hey, look at these cool instruments. now isn't the best time for you to <laughs> practice. Now, where were we? The drop is ready, sir. Oh, yes, the gear. This week, you'll be utilizing the expandable cable bungee belt, the wind tunnel 3000 tornado blast hairdryer, the suction cup bottomed go-go boot, the ultra-sensitive eerie microphone, and my personal favorite, a potty. A whaty? No, no, not up whaty. Up whaty. Underwater power walking apparatus that's inconspicuous. Now, goodbye and good luck, ladies. Or as they say in showbiz, 
Break a leg. Side, but I'm hanging out at the mall. So what's up with you, Clover? Oh, oh the usual. <laughs> My fan, the spies, is touring with Ricky Mathis. We're just hanging out at our extravagant from Glamorous Hotel in London right now. Whoa, you're on tour with Ricky Mathis? I had no idea you were even in a band. Oh, yeah. I'm quite an accomplished guitarist. <laughs> wow, awesome. Hey, like, maybe when you get back, we can get together and, you know, jam or something. I could probably squeeze you in next week. I'll let you know. Bye. You must be the spies. Spies? That's ridiculous. Who told you we were spies? Yes, that's us, the spies. We rock. Well, I am Phil Jenkins, the tour manager. Ricky's very anxious to meet you. What do you say we head up to the penthouse? Great song. Thanks. I just wrote it. We're scheduled to record Ricky's new song tomorrow morning. I'm sure it's going to be his next big hit. We're sure it will be, too. We're thrilled to be touring with such great musical talent. The feeling's mutual. I just adore your early work. We have early work? Shh. Hey, you guys should come to the recording studio and hang out. It'll be a blast. Uh, sorry, Ricky. Your recording sessions are strictly off limits. This sounds like fun. We'd love to go. Great. Uh, okay, everybody, we don't want to keep those hungry fans waiting. Oopsie. Hmm. That's weird. Since when do CDs glow? So, besides the fact that he has totally crazed fans and glowing CDs, Ricky seems pretty normal to me. Ouch! <laughs> oh, well, here goes nothing. You ready, Clover? Clover? Clover, you are not supposed to be listening to music. You were supposed to be playing it. Besides, I took Ricky's CD for evidence. Too bad, because I totally dig it. It's really infectious. Nice job lip syncing. Took me forever to get it right. You lip sync, Ricky? I don't like to, but Phil insists that I don't sing live. I guess I can't argue with success. So much for the theory about Ricky being normal. The guy doesn't even sing. It's not the only thing that isn't normal. Check that out, girls. What do you say we go grab a spy's eye view? Good idea. Clover, you coming? Are you crazy? I've got a killer view right here. <laughs> is a go for tomorrow's recording session, and I've prepared the, uh, special lyrics. Unfortunately, Ricky invited those pesky spies to come in. We'll have to keep tight security. Huh? Oh, oh uh, hey, 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 girls, what's wrong? Uh, aren't you having fun? Hey! I think I've gone deaf! <laughs> Actually, the booth is, uh, soundproof. The noise night after night gives me uh, a headache. I prefer just to watch. <laughs> Ricky's fans are nuts, his CDs glow, he doesn't sing, and his manager sits in a soundproof booth during his shelves. Getting freaky. What do you think, Clover? I think Ricky was incredible. I mean, he's so talented. I could just listen to him all night. Must wow. hear Ricky. Okay, this is weird. Maybe we should check it out with Jerry? 
Hello, ladies. I hope rock stardom hasn't gone to your heads. It hasn't so far, but if we keep getting showered with roses, it might. Oh, those. They were sent by one Damon Reynolds. Hey, Clover! The flowers are for you! Damon sent them! Please, now that I'm involved with Ricky, I'm like so over Damon. Oh, man, how deluded can you get? Not to mention Fickle. So anyway, Jerry, what can you tell us about a Mr. Sebastian? Hmm, it says here he's the owner of Ricky Mathis' record label. Apparently, he used to be quite the successful guitar player before he lost his arm in a freak pyrotechnics accident. <laughs> now, he's an eccentric reckless producer who lives on a remote island off the coast of Brazuela. Ricky! So, who's ready to go to my recording studio in Brazuela? Wow! So I wonder what was up with that strange radio tower thing being strapped to the yacht. Well, Ricky says it's so they can broadcast the concert live. I don't buy it. Since when do you need guards to watch a satellite dish? This is definitely the creepiest recording studio I've ever seen. That was great, Ricky. Yeah, it was totally excellent. Uh, uh, now, why don't we lay down the lyrics? I'm Ricky and I'm your master. Follow me as I spread disaster. Take over huh? the government, do as I say. I'll rule the world and you'll obey? Uh, Phil, I, I sort of didn't intend for the new song to be so aggressive. What happened to the lyrics I wrote? Ricky, trust me, I, I know what I'm doing. These new lyrics will give you a song that hip, edgy feel the kids are so wild about these days. Okay, I'd say those definitely fall under the special lyrics category. All the lyrics Ricky sings are special. Maybe, maybe we should take this opportunity to do a little spying. I'm right behind you. I just love it when fashion has a purpose. Oh! single is all finished. Excellent. The frequency has been successfully added. Good. Now let's see the effects firsthand. I take it the guy with the scary hook is Sebastian. And I take it he doesn't play guitar much these days. Have a seat. We want to know what you think of this new song. <laughs> I'll follow you as you spread disaster. Take over the government, do as you say. You'll rule the world and I'll obey. You're dismissed. You're Ricky and you're my master. I'll follow you as you spread disaster. Did you see that? It's like, it's like Ricky's song hypnotized that guy or something. The frequency they were talking about must be some kind of subliminal mind control device. That would explain why Clover's been acting so crazy. Huh? Think about it. Ricky's first song, Rock Legend, is about rock star worship. And what does it do? It hypnotizes listeners into worshiping him. They do whatever the lyrics tell them to. So that means if Ricky performs at the concert, the fans will do whatever the lyrics say. Security, we have intruders. Ah! Run! Run! Nice gadget. What was that, a portable high viscosity oil cannon? Don't blame us. Cheer.
very thought of it. Unfortunately, you'll never have a chance to report what you've learned, because in approximately 20 seconds, the only thing you'll be interested in will be the worshipping of Ricky Mathis. Which means that tonight you won't mind when I jam all the radio, TV, and internet signals around the globe. Nor will it bother you when I take control of the world with my newly hypnotized slaves, because you will be two of them. Enjoy your last moments of free will. out there playing. Well, we would be, except your good friends Phil and Sebastian decided to lock us in a recording booth and use a hypnotic version of your new song to try to turn us into zombies. <laughs> Alex, fill him in. I gotta get to that radio tower. Now let's go watch the fireworks. Yeah, I got him. 
So, like, I was thinking, maybe we could get together and you could tell me all about your tour with Ricky Mathis. Sorry, Damon. After the whole tour experience, I'm, like, so over musicians. I'm so proud of you, Clover. Yeah, you finally come to your senses. I just decided that it's really dumb to fall for every guy with a guitar in his hands. Excuse me, huh? can anyone tell me where the music room is? I'm new and I'm kind of lost. <laughs> I'd be happy to take you to the music room. I guess this means she's back into musicians. Something tells me she never got over them. In fact, if you don't have lunch plans, you can buy me a non-fat latte, and I'll give you a tour of the school. here lost his nerve. Come on, I'm psyched to see how fast this thing is. Let's see how you like getting pushed around, friend. Hey! What's up with this? Brett has been a bad boy. Brett needs a lesson. This court has no choice but to find you guilty of violating the school dress code. But Clover, your honor, our heels are only a half inch higher than the code allows. Can't you give us a break? Well, considering the circumstances, I guess I can let you off with a suspended sentence. Objection, your dishonor. This is total favoritism. I agree. You're much too lenient to be a student court judge, Clover. I'm replacing you with Mandy. Ah! Thank you, Miss Brooks. I promise I'll restore dignity to this <laughs> And I'll restore integrity, too. This court finds all three of you in contempt and sentences you to three weeks of picking up trash. Integrity. Ha! What a brown noser. Yeah. Who does she think she is? The Supreme Court? Ew. This is like supremely nasty. There must be a way to pick this stuff up faster. There is. Check it out. Huh? <laughs> Can't you get a normal office? <laughs> Sorry, ladies, but we need you urgently. 14 hours ago, a computer trapped a student named Brett Brinkley on a Las Vegas roller coaster. <laughs> We've had two similar attacks. In Italy, a tourist was attacked by an airport baggage machine. <laughs> and a computerized elevator at Silicon Valley High left the principal quite shook up. More proof that climbing stairs is healthier. Your first stop is Las Vegas. Today's gadget menu includes the Koi Purse, Life Raft, Parachute. Oh, don't spray on that perfume, Alex. It's liquid nitrogen. It freezes steel, makes it as brittle as glass. Extremely cool. Careful, the hairdryer is an infrared heat ray, the stereo is a sonic disintegrator, and the camera fires a laser beam. <laughs> Guess I won't need film, <laughs> will I? Looks like Brett's had enough fun. Get ready to grab him. Careful. Here he comes. Go time! Come on, pal. Time to give someone else a turn. Remind me to stick to the merry-go-round next time we go to an amusement park. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> get it. How could a computer voice know your name? Search me. I'm on the football team, babe. I don't study computers or anything else. Football? Yeah, I bet you ace all your tests. I don't have to, babe. I just grab the nearest nerd and, uh, persuade him to help me. Well, speaking as a nerd, I'm starting to see why computers attack you. 
Whoa, whoa, what do you mean computers? You talk like there's more than one. In case you haven't noticed, this hotel is holding the annual computerized gadget show. new Brett. We gotta get him somewhere safe. I'll have whoop agents pick him up. We have to get to Italy before anything else happens to that gym coach. <laughs> ah! Oh, you want some, Mr. Machine? since he got baggage handled. Look, I've never been to Vegas. I don't know this Brett kid, and I don't want to go anywhere. You'll be safer at Whoop. But cars, planes, ships, they all have computer chips now. If computers are out to get me, how do I travel? Hmm. Hey, this is what I call low tech. This funicular railway is powered by a cable. No computer on board. I'm guessing the answer is no. You've been a bad boy, coach. Time for your punishment. <laughs> a gym coach, but do you have any enemies? Only every kid I ever taught. Any who were good with computers? Well, I had this one geek running laps all last year. I forgot his name. He transferred to Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley High? Isn't that where victim number three is principal? That's it! The coach picks on kids at one school, Brett at another. What if they both bully the same kid who's now at Silicon Valley? Time to pay a visit to Silicon Valley High. We can drop the coach off at Whoop on the way. Huh? <sighs> <sighs> Every time I think Jerry can't come up with a more annoying way for us to travel, he outdoes himself. Wow. Silicon Valley High makes our school look so... so 20th century. How can we blend in so we don't look so suspicious? By not blending in, let's take a backstage tour of their auditorium. Wow! Look at all that! Yeah! Uh, sorry. Principal Vegan is out sick today. Oh dear, can you help us, love? 
We're new exchange students. I'm Samantha from England. I am Alexandra from Russia. Is enrolling in school, Vivant? I am Clover Patra from Egypt. Hi, I I'm Adam Lewis. Those clothes look familiar. You've never uh, done a school play here, have you? Yet, we are just arriving. <laughs> oh, a thousand pardons, Effendi. We wish to meet other students who are new here. Could we see your, how you say, database of new arrivals? Sure, let me input my password. Just don't tell the principal, okay? Chaz. Chad stands for Computer Home Analyzer and Defender. My invention. He, it, can access any computer anywhere. Uh -huh. I spend a lot of time on Chad because Dad's always moving us. I guess we both know how hard it is to make friends when you're new in school. All those bullies and snobs. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, I am very busy? Adam! I warned you about using my computer to download games or whatever it is you're doing. I'm revoking your access permanently. What? But, but Principal Vegan, you can't do that! No? Watch me. Now get out! And would you three explain? Mrs. Vegan, you shouldn't have come back. You're in huge danger. Danger? From who? Oh man, I can't play with the school mainframe anymore, Chad. Don't worry, Adam. I already uploaded instructions to it. Vera Vegan won't bother us again. Hmm? Are your door locks computerized? Yes. Windows, too. Why do you ask? Ah! And your sprinklers? Hey, Chad, what's going on? Just a little prank, Adam. I'll show you when we get home. to dish out punishment. You're worried about a copier? No, I, I'm worried about a stapler. <laughs> How long can you keep that up? Won't need to for long. In a minute, we're gonna run out of air. Sam, give me your path. I just need to paint for a while. Ten students transferred here, and one was Adam. But could any kid hack into so many systems so fast? It's not humanly possible. Wait a sec. That voice we keep hearing doesn't sound human. Maybe our hacker isn't human. Jerry, we have ten suspects, but if you can run a check on... Later, Sam. Someone in Silicon Valley just used the internet to hack into a missile base on Guam. I'll send a jet to pick you up. Sergeant Clover, relieving you, sir. General wishes to huh? see you on the double, sir. from launching! Get back! Uh-oh! Seen that password before! Sorry, girls. You're not going to interfere this time. Excuse me now. I have some schools to vaporize. <gasps> We're running out of time! Oops. But all you've done is buy a few hours. I'll just infiltrate another silo. <gasps> and you're not going anywhere. Where's that instant metal freezer?
Let's get back to Silicon Valley. The only way to stop this is to find that hacker. Our suspects just narrowed to one. Adam's password is the name of his invention, Chad. What are you running? Oh, I ran those so-called exchange students through some databases. You mean Samantha, Alexandra, and... I mean Sam, Alex, and Clover. They're from Beverly Hills High. Those liars! Chad, I want you to mess their grades up so bad they get put back in kindergarten. No problem. Put on my virtual reality helmet, and you can see all our latest pranks. Wait a second. I asked you to prank everyone, but you've been, you've been hurting them instead. Coach Hassler and Principal Vegan and Brett? Yes, the ones who hurt us. They've been bad. They must be punished. And, and now you're... You're gonna fire missiles at all my old schools? You wish they could be destroyed, all those bullies and snobs. But I was mad when I said that. I just wanted to prank everyone, not, not hurt them. No, we're in this together now, Adam. We need to share your mind, your creativity, your body. You are right, Chad. Combined with your power, nothing on Earth can stop us. Target those schools and prepare for countdown. <laughs> Picked up. The message says his father's out of town. You think Adam's setting a trap? Not Adam. That thing he invented. You said it yourself, Alex. The hacker is too fast to be human. It travels on the internet, controls other computers. That's the answer. Chad thinks for itself. An evil computer with a mind of its own. Ugh, that is so creepy. <gasps> we have to pull Chad's plug at the source. We all set? So think stealth. I 
made a monster who almost destroyed us all. You didn't know what Chad was doing. I was just scared you wouldn't snap out of it. You think that was scary? In a few hours, we have to face Judge Mandy. Aww. Okay, whoa, this is contempt of court. Mandy, enough is enough. Tell me about it. I'll sentence them to huh? six weeks picking up trash. No, you <laughs> won't. You have utterly failed to enforce the dress code. You are off the student court. Oh, really? Well, if I'm not judge anymore, then I demand a new job. Uh, Mandy, you missed a milk carton. Tell you the drop, day. Eh? All I can say is you better not have pulled us away to do your laundry, Jerry. We have just learned that top athletes from around the world are mysteriously vanishing. Do you have any idea how this is happening, Jerry? All we have to go on is footage of this race car driver in Florida. That's the same blue flash we saw surrounding the athletes in the other clips. But the driver didn't disappear. It's your mission, girls, to go to Florida, protect the driver, and find out what's making these athletes vanish into thin air. Any questions? Just one. Do those cute silver jumpsuits come in size six? The gadgets you'll be using on this mission include an electromagnetic sensitive video camera, sapphire hologram cones, <gasps> microscopic retracting goggles for clues that are invisible to the naked eye, and the latest in virtual reality disguise belts. This is so cool. You can go straight from the gym to school or the prom with the push of a button. <clears throat> now, for your transportation to Florida, we're giving you Kurt. Kurt? Is he a chauffeur? I hope he's cute and likes to shop. Kurt stands for Clunky Incognito Radical Thought Transporter. I mean, to know, uh, I mean, him. That's it. You've got to be kidding. Not to worry, girls. Kurt is in incognito mode. By simple voice command. <laughs> ah, you girls better get on your way. <laughs> girls, or as they say in Japan, ko uno inu. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
taping of Troy's show. Okay, shh. Remember, we're journalists. Act professional. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Parks, we're journalists from Teen Racer magazine. Could you be a dear and tell us what you remember from the incident the other day? Sure. I really don't remember much, except a course for the flash of light that made me lose control of the car. I almost hit that photographer. What photographer? He came and left on a motorcycle. That's all I know. If y'all will excuse me, I got a publicity photo shoot in about five minutes. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? That Dale's accent totally reminds me of Troy? Alex, please. I'm thinking that the photographer Dale mentioned might have something to do with this. Come on, let's check the track for clues. Well, if that photographer had anything to do with this, he sure didn't leave us any clues. Great, now what do we do? Let's stick close to Dale during the photo shoot and keep an eye out for that photographer on the motorcycle. I'll tell you what, I'll stick close to Dale while you keep an eye out for the motorcycle guy. <laughs> Telling Jerry Kurt needs a serious makeover? Well, we got bigger issues, like finding out what happened to Alex and Dale. Hello? Help! Alex? I'm on some kind of racetrack in the creepiest looking desert I've ever seen! for clues. Look, the camera picked up electromagnetic rays coming from that device. Of course. That would explain why Dale didn't disappear the first time. The silver jumpsuit must have deflected those rays. I knew there was a reason I liked that jumpsuit. I think we better call Jerry and let him know what we found. Hello, girls. How's the mission coming along? Not great, Jer. Alex and Dale have been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Oh my, how can I help? Clover's camera picked up some kind of electromagnetic ray that apparently downloaded Alex and Dale into an electronic device. A machine that can download people? Let's see, I do vaguely remember hearing something a few years back about a woman game designer who claimed she had designed such a device. Yes, yes, here it is. A Carla Wong, better known as the Lady Dragon. 
Finally, an evil villain who isn't bitter about being dissed or something. It says here that the Lady Dragon left the video game industry several years ago because they refused to make some of her more eccentric games. Figures. So, how do we find this Lady Dragon? You can always use the indestructible homing device in Alex's comm powder to track her. We're on it, Jerry. <laughs> short-sighted fools who couldn't grasp my revolutionary vision. But now that I am back with a new line of games, those who oppose me will see the error of their ways. In fact, if you will wait here, I will give you a demonstration. I don't know how, but those girls followed me from the racetrack. Tell everyone to keep their eyes out for them. I've come too far to have anyone interrupt my plans. Sam, what are you doing? This isn't time to be playing video junkie. Clover, look at this poster for the Lady Dragon's new game. That looks just like the desert Alex described. Yeah, come on. We've got to get inside this investor meeting. Sorry, invitation only. Hey, pal, you're looking at major investor material right here. Hey, don't they still look like the girls the Lady Dragon told us to watch out for? Get her. Get her. Where'd they go? These virtual reality belts are totally awesome. How do I look? Do the words hair restoration mean anything to you? My new technique for enhancing realistic gameplay is so incredible, you'll feel like you're playing against real people. to whet their appetites. Besides, we must hurry to the warehouse to download the new athletes and prepare for mass production. Did you hear that? We've got to tell Jerry about the Lady Dragon downloading more athletes. But what about Alex and Dale? You two! <laughs> Guard the room and make sure nobody gets near the game. Quick, we've got to get them out. Maybe I can crash the system. <laughs> It's Alex. Stay behind me. Any time. Bad news. These power packs are losing juice fast. Well, isn't my two biggest fans. We know you've been kidnapping athletes and downloading them into your games, Lady Dragon. We're here to put an end to it. Unfortunately for you, there is no stopping me. Once I put my games into mass production, all the athletes will be multiplied a thousand times over, trapping them permanently. Get them. These sapphire hologram pendants better work. <laughs> I could help you, girls, 
but I've got nothing. Have you tried the wharf? The wharf, of course. That's where the warehouses always are. Why didn't we think of that? Thanks, Jared. Girls, I, I think I'm losing you. I don't know who you girls are, but you've interrupted my plans for the last time. Really. Just like with Dale's silver jumpsuit, electromagnetic fields can't work against a surface of deflection. Uh, yeah, right. Real simple. Now, let's get to the Lady Dragon's warehouse. Oh, wait! I forgot to give Dale my phone number. Clover? Really? This is the strangest basketball tournament I've ever seen. Yeah, where are all the fans? I'm afraid you won't be hearing the sound of screaming fans anymore. Oh, Lady Dragon. I thought I told you months ago I didn't want to have anything to do with endorsing your whacked out game. Yeah, yeah, I told you. Silence! This time I'm not asking. Hi, I'm Troy. Hi, 
I'm Troy. Hi, I'm Troy. Hi, I'm Troy. No Hi. wonder I'm Troy's Troy. so Hi. perfect. Troy. He's computer generated. I should have known he was too good to be true. Oh, sorry, Alex. But I know a way you could visit Troy if you really want to. That's okay. Been there, done that. Sorry! Oh, that's okay. I'm Steve. I created Troy. Oh, really? I'm Alex. Oh. <laughs> for a long, long time. about the same guy. Hi, Alex, Clover, Sam. Hi, David. Wait, <gasps> why are you two looking at my true love that way? Your true love? David's the guy I was talking about. Well, I inspire him intellectually. Clover, we practically held hands in track and field. Alex, mm. Sam, look at you two competing over a guy when he obviously likes me. <laughs> See about that. Yeah, all's fair in love. Girls, we have a rather peculiar situation on our hands. A single country is dominating the Winter Olympics. Well, let me get this straight. You pulled us away from David because of some silly games? The Olympics are not just games, Clover, nor are they silly. That's right. They're a wonderful international sporting event that celebrates the spirit of competition. Something David and I could appreciate. Alex, when will you realize there is no competition? <sighs> Girls, focus. Here's the team dominating speed skating and ice hockey, and again in the biathlon. In fact, they've swept all the events thus far. And the weird part is? The odds of a single team winning every medal in every event are quite minuscule, not to mention the fact that the team excelling in winter sports is from tropical Zanzibar. So someone's doing something, we just don't know who or what. Exactly. Now, please help yourself to the Digit Decoder credit card, enhanced with a razor-sharp swiping edge, bracelet handcuffs, heat sensor 6,000 infrared motion detector sunglasses, just sticky enough gloves, and awful boots. All weather fleas, ultra light. <gasps> Completely hideous. Totally your style, Sam. Hope David likes them. This mission is too perfect. I'll go undercover as one of the athletes. Oh, so you can tell David you were in the Olympics? Forget it. 
Yeah, forget it. Besides, I'm the only one here who has any business wearing a form-fitting microfiber. Hmm. Ooh. Alex. Thanks, dear. I knew you'd see it my way. You will go undercover as a reporter. <laughs> Sam, you'll go undercover as a trainer, and Clover, you will be a bobsledder. <gasps> but that's a burly person sport. I'm dainty. Don't be so modest, Clover. Your thighs are stronger than anyone's I know. <laughs> Cheerio, girls! They look like normal athletes to me. Oh, well then, case closed. Let's tell Jerry and go home. Insults won't solve this case, and the sooner we solve it, the sooner I can return to my true love. Shopping. <laughs> Officially in need of some alone time. Fine by me. I second the motion. I'm at the Zanzibar ski jump and everything appears normal. I need to look for something unusual, out of the ordinary, bizarre. Not at all. Man, I must have been going faster than I thought. Either that or you've been pumping a little too much iron lately. Actually, I don't work out. Don't work out? But how can that be? You're an Olympic athlete. I just have really good coaching. I better get fitted for another uniform before my next jump. a lot, huh? Not really. Then how'd you get so good? I have a great coach. In fact, he taught us this routine just yesterday, and I was scared I wouldn't have it memorized. But he promised everything would be fine, and it is. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you're totally knotted up. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Um, how do you feel now? Much better. The kink's gone. <laughs> his replacement. Let's go, we're up. Oh, no, 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 there must be some misunderstanding. I'm just here to observe. <laughs> really? I haven't done this before and I'm just an intern. Coach wouldn't steer us wrong. If you're here, it's because he knows you're ready. No, I swear! Seconds. I told you Coach knows what he's doing. With his guidance, we're unstoppable. Yay, Coach. Huh? Alex, Sam, Clover, Alex, Sam, Clover. Well, something weird is definitely going on, but I don't think the athletes are cheating. I don't know. Take a look at this. <gasps> what is it? Something from a bobsledder's nose. <laughs> He must have been really undercover for him not to notice. I didn't take it from his nose, he sneezed it out. Phew! 
I'll send it to Jerry for analysis. Other than this, all I got was that the bobsled team really likes their coach. Yeah, the ski jumper said the same thing. So did Mira, the figure skater. Well, this is one coach I'd like to meet. Good idea. Let's see what we can find out about him first. <laughs> Way to ruin our stealthy approach, Clover. It's not my fault I'm allergic to daffodils. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Memento for David. for the weekend, and this guy fits an entire lab in one bag? Why such complex charts on the athletes? It's all about their biology, chemistry, and DNA. Huh? Hey, Jer, what do you have? Interesting development, girls. The bug you sent is a synthetic microorganism that's undetectable by testing. Once inside the body, it releases not only performance-enhancing hormones, but it downloads knowledge as well. <gasps> so no one need ever train again? Precisely. I guess that's how Mira knew her routine. Ha! I knew they were cheating. Ah! What's the matter? <laughs> Jerry, there's a whole colony of those bugs, enough to engineer an entire Olympic team of super athletes. Shutting down. Oh, shh. <laughs> yeah, I guess I haven't worked all the bugs out of my bugs yet. Oh, shh. Too much exposure eventually causes the opposite effect. Oh, it's almost sad to see my first guinea pig go. She's a human being, you cheater! Oh. Guys, you were supposed to shush me! So much for hanging around here! <laughs> I said I was gonna take home the gold for Zanzibar in the Winter Games. Okay, so I was a little optimistic back then, but now, thanks to the microchip bug, my super athletes are dominating. At what cost? You're putting innocent lives at stake. Everyone's a critic. If you wanna see your friends again, you'll take Mira's place and win the gold. Me? But I can't even skate. I mean, I know I have the grace of a figure skater, but... Haven't you been listening to my athletes? All you need is good coaching. I'll feed you all the information you need. No, thanks. I'm really not very hungry. Not a problem. 
Trying to continue until they get the command from me to stop. And your point is? If you don't win the competition, this is gonna be a one way trip. You'll never see your little friends again. <laughs> Again. Oh, right. Good thinking, Sam. We have to hurry. Clover's life depends on us. And Mira's. I just hope we find an antidote in time. Or some sort of bug zapper. Wait a minute. Clover said the bobsledder sneezed his out. We just have to make them sneeze. I'll get Mira. You go to Clover. <laughs> you know, his boots aren't so awful after all. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have given you three bugs. You think? Shouldn't I know the routine by now? No, seriously, I don't know what to do. Just give me a hit. I mean, turns, get forward, backward, flip, slap shot, work. Go to it and put you out here if you didn't know what to do. competition.
teach you that cheetahs only cheat themselves? We should probably explain to the judges. No need. Already taken care of. Thank you so much for helping me. It's what we do. It's so great that Mira and her partner won the gold fair and square. Yeah, no tricks, the way it should be. Good sports all the way. Hi, Clover, Sam, Alex. Hi, David. David, you can't keep us waiting forever. We need to know which one of us you like. What do you mean? I like all of you. No, 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 no. Which of us do you, do you know, like, like? Oh. We want you to pick one of us. You don't just pick a girl like a product off a shelf. We don't mind, really, go ahead, tell them it's me. Clover, Alex, Sam, please, you're all really great. I can't possibly choose between you, I'm sorry. Did, Did you, you see that? that? He, he was, was looking, looking right, right at me! Okay, this is crazy, we said we weren't gonna do this. Right, good sportsmanship and all that. And besides, he was staring into my eyes. <laughs> Checking me out? You're both delusional. It's me he wants. <laughs> <laughs> From. It's not the com powder I'm upset about. It's the mirror. I broke it and now I'm doomed to seven years of bad luck. Whatever, Alex. That's just a superstition. No, it uh -huh. isn't. It's a jinx. And we'd better get to the roller rink fast before something bad happens to us. Oh, I thought going to the roller rink was the bad thing. <gasps> my roller rink. It's been totally trashed, but it's all my fault. What are you talking about? Hello, I broke a mirror. I told you it would bring me bad luck. Okay, I seriously doubt a ruined roller rink has anything to do with bad luck. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, it's actually kind of good luck because now we can go blading at the boardwalk. <gasps> or even better, to the mall. Don't let us go blading at the mall? No, shopping at the mall. Sure, if we hail that taxi first. Taxi! <laughs> Well, hello, girls. So glad you could drop by. We have another crisis on our hands. Apparently, during the past few nights, numerous local establishments have been completely destroyed. Huh? You mean like the roller rink? Among others, Smoothie King, Pumps, Platforms and Piggies, and even the new Scrunchy City was struck as well. Not Scrunchy City! I'm afraid so, Clover. I'm truly sorry. Oh, no. Bad luck strikes again. Perhaps, although this violet rampage began long before you broke your mirror. And expensive comb powder. 
But why? Who's doing this? We're not certain, but we believe it's the work of some underground group of anarchists. We were able to salvage this videotape from the Renewing Security Monitor. As you can see, it is obviously a deliberate act of destruction. If there was music, I'd say it was a deliberately out there rave. I beg your pardon? You know, a rave, as in underground after hours party? Hmm? You don't know what a rave is? That is so weird. Not half as weird as the fact that there was a rave and I didn't know about it? Whoever they are, we suspect that they'll strike again tonight. Well then, what are we hanging around here for? Lay some gadgets on us, Jer. I was hoping you'd say that. Tonight, you will be utilizing the Heat Sensor 6000 infrared sunglasses, the expandable cable bungee belt, and ultra-sensitive two-clip banana beret listening device. Too cute! Any other questions? Good. Well, ta-ta! Yeah, 
And since it fell out of our friend's pocket, something tells me we should send it to Woot for analyzing. <laughs> Okay, so am I the only one who thinks it's strange that we're totally out of the rave loop? It's not strange when you're Jinx, or at least not any stranger than that. Wow, looks like everybody in school went shopping last night. Girls, there's definitely something strange going on here, and I see it's time we found out what. Ah! Hey, Nanny, huh? been to any raves lately? Did you happen to catch the new Pablo Picardo exhibit at the museum? Oh, I love the new look, Arnold. Who's your personal shopper? Hyper Rave is the wave of the future. Hyper Rave is the wave of the future? Like, that was helpful. Not. So now what? Hmm. What else? We accessorize. So, you going tonight? Got my invitation right here. Hyper Rave is the wave of the future! <laughs> well, one thing's for sure, there's another rave tonight. If only we were invited. Leave this one to me. <laughs> Tonight, 10 p.m., Beverly Hills Mall. Finally! I was beginning to think we were never going shopping. <laughs> Mind. Titles are so meaningless to me. What interests me is revenge. Am I the only one who's still stuck on the fact that Mr. Sebastian is the DJ? It's not so hard to understand, really. You 
you sent me to prison, I escaped, and now I'm getting revenge. So not inviting us to your raves is your revenge? Boy, are you rusty in the villain department. Not if those raves end up destroying every single place the three of you hold near and dear. <gasps> He's right. The first rave ruined Alex's roller rink, the second rave totally trashed my museum, and now this rave is going to destroy my mall? That is so evil! Now do you believe me about the bad luck? And the beauty of it is that I don't have to live to think. Those kids are going to do it all for me. All I have to do is play this micro-digital virus, and anyone hearing it will be instantly hypnotized and programmed to do my bidding. Which, let me guess, has something to do with destroying our favorite hangouts? Exactly. Care for a demonstration? I don't hear anything. Hello! This glass is soundproof! But let me assure you, your friends down there can hear every note. compared to what I've got planned for my finale. It'll be a real learning experience. This is where you get off. Ah! Ah! Hyper Rave is the wave of the future! Ah! That was so uncalled for. What a loser. And what does he mean about his finale being a learning experience? Isn't that like the total opposite reason for having a rave? A real learning experience. by way of some remote feed hookup. There he is, up on the roof. We've got to stop him before it's too late.
Nice work, girls. Sorry about the sign, Jerry. Guess I gotta work on my landing. On the contrary, Alex. Your landing skills are what saved the school from complete destruction. Turns out the sign was where Sebastian was broadcasting his music from. So the rave's over? Everybody's back to normal? Well, I wouldn't say everybody. thing about it. It's like Sebastian's disc erased everyone's memory. Hey, did you hear? Vandals broke into the school last night and totally trashed it. Makes you so upset you just want to clean the whole place up, you know? See what I mean? And to think this all happened because I broke that stupid mirror. Uh -huh. Huh? Alex, that jinx thingy is so last week. Nuh-uh, it's not last week or even last month. It's going to be for a whole seven years. on top of a first bad luck just cancels the first bad luck out. Get it? You're neutralized. Oh, wow, that's great! Thanks, guys! <laughs> Finally, this bad luck stuff is over. <laughs> oh, no. You don't think that when we pulled Alex under the ladder, we got jinxed? Good luck, girls. Because now that you're jinxed, you'll need it. <laughs> Take more than a radioactive avalanche to get rid of me, Vlad Marina. Now, hand over the microphone. Take the stupid film, if that's all you care about. Oh, that ain't all, baby. Yeah. Ah. Okay, people, take five. Okay. <laughs> So, not on my diet. But you won't tell anybody, will you? your total emergency? Whoop was founded to stop international crises, not to hunt misplaced heartthrobs. But Tad Bailey's not just any old heartthrob. He's an international superstar, hence an international crisis. Come on, Jerry. Please. Oh, very well. <laughs> Then, I've arranged for three undercover positions on the set of this vapid soap opera. Alex will assist with wardrobe, Sam, you will be working as a caterer, and Clover will pose as an actress on the show. Yeah! You got me a part on Days of Our Spies? Dear, this is my big break. You should be my agent. Do I have a big part? 
Do I get to slap anybody? You're playing unimportant bystander number three. Big break. That doesn't even sound like a bump. Okay, Jerry, we've got our cover. Now let's talk gadgets. Oh, I think not. This mission is not official Woot business. I can't equip you with the usual expensive devices. Please? All right, all right. You can take the jetpack backpack, the genetic scan hairbrush, and the tornado in a can of hairspray. But that's all. Excuse me, what about a vehicle? If I'm going to be a superstar, I need a way fancy ride. This fancy ride is all I can spare. The Hepcat, highly experimental prototype car for technology testing. We use it to try out new gadgets. Just be sure not to activate the onboard scramjet. It's never been successfully tested. So it's been tested unsuccessfully. Spy Command Central, Ace Rocks and Secret Headquarters. This is so cool. We're not here for the tour, remember? I'll search for the production offices. Alex, talk to the crew. Maybe they have some needs. And Clover, see if you can... Whoa, hey, I can't do spy stuff. I've got lines to learn. Mm. Hey, I don't have any lines. You do now. The girl we hired to play my new villain has just called in ugly. So you're going to play Sinestro's daughter. <laughs> my plan is proceeding on schedule. I, Sinestro, will freeze the world, and with Agent Ace Roxon lost in outer space, no one can stop me! You mean, <gasps> no one can stop us! What's wrong, Sinestro? Don't you recognize your own daughter? That's right, it is I, Gwendolyn Moon, your one and only child. I just escaped from prison and... Uh, Marty. I'm thinking perhaps Sinestro should explain all this. I mean, she is my daughter, and with Tad gone, the audience will naturally want to see more of me. Fine. Sinestro gets Gwendolyn's lines. And rolling! So, any idea what happened to Tad? Uh, sorry, hon. I don't talk to the help. Huh? Learn anything? I totally know who did it. Wilhelm LaRue. That no talent hack who plays Sinestro. He was asking for a bigger role now that Tad is missing. So you think Wilhelm had him kidnapped? Well, he does play a bad guy and he hawks the camera. Camera? Of course. I'll bet Tad's disappearance was caught on tape. The show wasn't taping when it happened. Maybe the TV cameras weren't taping, but I bet you this little guy was. So all we have to do is search the surveillance database and then sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Whoa! Wilhelm has some fancy gizmos. I'm not so sure it was, Wilhelm. Yeah, those gadgets were like something Jerry would give us. Spy stuff. <gasps> Let's go! According to the video, Tad was standing right here. <gasps> Look! Jelly from Tad's donut! Good idea. We may need that as evidence. Evidence? Try souvenir. This jelly touched Tad Bailey's lips. Now huh? this looks like evidence. An electroshock stun dart. This is spy stuff. Which means Tad was kidnapped by some sort of evil spy organization. But how do we find them? This. <laughs> Find out who this belongs to, we'll find out who we're after. Lenore von Schramm of Salzburg, Austria. She must be one of the evil spies. Looks like we're going to Europe. But what about the show? My big break! <sighs> Not like I had any lines left anyway. Ew! I think somebody spilled soda back here. Not believe Jer made us take this gross cart all the way to here. <laughs> Lenore's last known address. This must be the place. The compad 
Empire's picking up a lot of electronic activity. Well, it sure doesn't look like any evil spy headquarters. That's just what they want us to think. Now, come on. Let's take them by surprise. <laughs> All right. Everybody free! <laughs> Hello? Huh? <laughs> Hi. Um, we're, we're doing a, a, a survey of TV fans. An important <laughs> survey? Uh, that's why we kicked your door in. And it explains why we're wearing these high-tech survey taker uniforms. So, uh, first huh? question. Ever been to the Days of Our Spies set? Oh. Yeah, I just got back from my super neat visit to Hollywood. I went on the most wonderful tour. They gave me this fancy backstage pass, and I had my picture made with Vlad Marina. I wanted a picture with Ace Roxanne, but he disappeared. Oh, I just worried sick about him. Sit, sit, sit down. I'll fix some tea and some muesli bars, and we can look at my photos together. Uh. Thanks, but maybe some other time? Yeah, we've got lots more people to survey. Sorry to trouble you. Oh, no trouble. No trouble at all. Oh, Vendelon Moon was here. Sinestro's daughter. She's up to no good. But the very Agent Roxanne, Lenore will take care of everything. Oh, now, now, yes, we agreed. I had to kidnap you for your own good. You're always in such danger. I just know you'll be much safer here with me. In time, I know you'll come to care for me just as much as I care for you. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll be Mrs. Ace Roxon. But first... I've got to get rid of Venom and her little friends. I cannot believe I gave up my big break for this. That lady was so not guilty. I know. The cone cutter must be broken. It led us on a wild goose chase. Now how are we gonna find the evil spies who kidnapped Tad? I think they just TV star until... <gasps> Come on, Clover. It's showtime. This must be the Evil Spy's secret headquarters. Why do I feel like I've been here before? Look. Lenore! Like to know, Gwendolyn. Shh. 
why this place is familiar. It's an exact replica of Ace Roxon's headquarters. <gasps> and there's Agent Roxon! <laughs> so they take our uniforms indeed. Don't you think I know spies when I see them? I'll never let you and your minions hard Agent Ace Roxon. Okay, I'm not Gwendolyn. My name's Clover. Well, I think she thinks Days of Our Spies is real. Sounds like somebody's a few pages short of a script. Jerry, we need help. I'm sorry, Samantha, but I've given you all the help I can. No! Help, help! We're kind of tied <clears throat> up! <clears throat> Yes, well, I'm tied up too. I'm sorry, girls, but whatever new emergency has arisen on your soap opera, you'll just have to handle it yourselves. Okay, that was just rude. It's no use calling Sinestro for help. You'll be destroyed before. Stop! <laughs> Please, Days of Our Spies is just a TV show. It's not real, okay? I play Ace Roxon on TV. I'm an actor, not a secret agent. Oh, oh I am so sorry. So, so sorry for you, Ace. I don't know how, but that nasty Gwendolyn has brainwashed you. Name is Clover. Don't worry, Ace, dear. A few hours in my own brainwashing moment. And you'll soon remember just how much you love me. And as for you, sweetie, my fish are ready for an afternoon snack. I know the piranhas want in your original spy command, but I felt the place needed a woman's touch. You can't do this to us! To me! <laughs> I'm not doing this to you, Gwendolyn. Your punishment is much worse. <laughs> this laser will slowly slice you in half, so it may sting a little. <laughs> Sorry I can't stay and watch, but Ace and I have a future to think about. And we can't have our wedding until I get rid of Ace's biggest enemy. Sinestro. Did that helmet mess up my hair? Mm -hmm. It's fine. Marina, your precious ace is lost in space. You must love me now. Never, Sinestro. What's with the noise? Vladimirina, I should have known you were a double agent. Yo, what am I here, method actor? Um, what is going on? What's going on? What's going on is that you're freezing the world, Sinestro, and I'm here to stop you. <laughs> She's crazy!
show's over, Lenore. My valuable, valuable hair. So since Tad's bald and Wilhelm quit, maybe Gwendolyn <gasps> needs a bigger role. Waffle Iron accident. At least you're still auditioning for that commercial, right? Mandy got the part. She's the next Happy Burger spokesmodel. <gasps> Sorry, Clover. You must be so bummed. Well, I was, but... Huh? But they have to take it down. I look ridiculous. Well, I don't know. You're my agent. Make it happen. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but I'm kind of afraid to hand it in. I'm just not sure if it's good enough. I love poetry and all, but I'm so afraid of rejection. Really? What a coincidence! I love poetry, and I'm totally afraid of rejection, too. Then you must be afraid all the time. Hey, what? maybe after you write your poem, we could get together and give each other constructive criticism. Kind of like a study date. Did you say date? See you Saturday night. Toodles, Mandy. I'll let you know how our date turns out. Oh, oh! A poetry date? Don't bother. Sounds about as thrilling as watching nail polish dry. Oh! <laughs> so, what were you saying, Alex? Just that every time David's around, you completely ignore... Oh, that reminds me. I better call my personal shopper and tell her to find the perfect outfit for my date with David. Evil cell phone battery, how can you betray me at a time like this? Come on. May I? Whoa! He'll call you back. Okay, now, how do you even use one of these things? Just put a quarter in the... I don't have time to get whooped right now! I have an urgent call to make! <laughs> I'll never learn how to use a payphone. Hello, girls. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Jer, can't you use other whoop agents? I have a date with David and... No time, Clover. I need you girls to investigate a series of mysterious and violent abductions. Fortunately, one intended victim managed to escape an attack in his own home. And you want us to pay that person a visit? Correct. Oh, and before I forget... You are cordially invited to the annual Whoop Company picnic to be held at the Beijing Zoo. <gasps> Sounds fun! Hmm, I wonder if it's too tacky to wear a leopard skin skirt. As long as it's fake, I don't think the leopards will mind. By the way, attendance to the picnic is mandatory. In that case, I'll RSVP now. Me too. This totally reeks. The picnic is the same day as my date with David. There, there. Boys come and go, but Whoop is forever. Now, here are your gadgets. Tortoise shell magnifying shades, faux snakeskin parachute purse, net blaster mascara brush, scanner watch, and the Noggerhide biker chic lasso belt. Oh, this'll go great with my new pants. <laughs> According to Whoop, the man is a zoologist named Jacob. Huh? Ew, look at these nasty scratch marks. Maybe Jacob should manicure his fingernails. Fingernails? More like claws. Who... who is it? 
We're here to investigate your attack. Uh, sorry about that. After the attack, I just can't take any chances. Do you have any idea who would have wanted to attack you? Well, I don't have any enemies to speak of. Everyone likes me. I'm usually the life of the party. Remind me to skip that party. One thing's for sure, though. The person who attacked was cold and heartless. He wore a fur coat made from a very rare South American polar bear. Heartless huh? and unfashionable. Fur is so out. Do you mind if we come in and look around? Sure, no problem. I'll make us some tea. It's about the only thing that calms my nerves these days. So, did you tell David you have to call off the date yet? No, and I'm really dreading it. I know how sensitive he is about rejection. Oh well, here goes nothing. Hi, David, it's Clover. Listen, there's something I need to tell you. Hey, Clover, check out this poem I wrote about our date. You wrote a poem about our date? Clover, Clover, you are perfection. I can't wait for our date. <laughs> I hate rejection. <laughs> so, let me hear one of your poems. Oh, uh, you know what, David? Um, I'm going through the canyon. I'm losing you. <sighs> huh? Could this day possibly get any worse? <laughs> He's gone. Who, or should I say what, abducted him? Poor Jacob. All that's left of him is his shoe. This might actually tell us something. I'll check it out with the tortoiseshell magnifying shades. Hey, there's a blonde hair on it. Let's run it through the scanner watch. It's a hair from the same rare polar bear Jacob was talking about. So it must have been the same person who attacked Jacob the last time, because they're still wearing the same coat. Judging from the damage to that wall, I'd say it was the bear itself. Hello? We're in the middle of a city. Last I knew polar bears lived in the snow. Let's call Jerry to see if there are any polar bears in captivity around here. Hello, girls. Hi, Jer. Do you have any record of South American polar bears in captivity? Let's see. Oh, yes, there was one. But it recently escaped. And oddly, it was at the Beijing Zoo, the same place we're having our company picnic. Which reminds me, do you think we should serve potato salad or ambrosia at the picnic? <sighs> Neither. Thanks, Jer. Gotta run. But, but I... I got it, I got it. If I tell David our date is off in a poem, he won't take it so hard. What rhymes with, I'm dumping you? Uh... Merci beaucoup. Can you forget about your poem? We've got to get to the bottom of this case. Oh, my new volunteers. I'm glad you're here. Three of my most reliable staff members haven't shown up for work at all this week. That's weird. All the people who are missing seem to be animal workers. We're glad to be able to help. <gasps> Did you see that? He offered me the ball all by himself. Good monkey. Actually, Sherman is a gorilla. They're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Now, would you girls mind cleaning the polar bear and condor cages? Neither have been tended to since the animals went missing last week. Maybe this is why the employees stopped showing up for work. There's no sign of forced entry or exit, and no sign of foul play. Maybe it was an inside job. yourself. I'm far too intelligent to fall prey to your foolish little gadget. <gasps> Ta-ta, ladies. I'll see myself out. Okay, that was really unexpected. Huh? Now who's the intelligent one? I do not have time for your shenanigans. 
this device to Sherman's head, the next Sherman was behaving with human dexterity. I wonder if this thing is responsible for the way Sherman was acting. Okay, I want to know who's responsible for that ape slobbering all over me. Ah, if he can drive, he can certainly pay the dry cleaning bill. I better hurry back inside and make sure the rest of the animals are secure. And we better contact the authorities about Alex. Sam, I know you're really into recycling, but if you need a tissue, just ask. Let's run this through the scanner watch. Maybe we'll get a clue from Sherman's saliva. Look, it says Sherman's DNA is half human, half simian. Weird. Let's check it out with Jerry. Hello, girls. What do you think of coleslaw as a side dish? I think we have more important issues than side dishes. A talking, driving gorilla just kidnapped Alex. Yeah, we just sent you a very strange DNA sample. Well, I see what you mean by strange. The human half of the DNA belongs to a zoologist. I don't know who the gorilla half belongs to. Jer, do you have an address for the zoologist? I've just forwarded it to your compounder. And girls, need I remind you that I want Alex safely returned and all of this figured out quickly. You need not remind us, Jerry. Okay, let's pay a visit to the zoologist and see why his DNA is in Sherman's spit. <laughs> is okay. You don't think Sherman would hurt her, do you? Clover, hello? Sorry. Talking with Jer about the picnic reminded me that I still have to cancel on David. Just tell him you have to reschedule. That way he won't feel rejected and you still get to go out with him. Reschedule, of course. And if I tell him in a rhyme, he probably won't mind. Hello, hello. I hope you're not feeling low. David here. Hi, David. It's Clover. I have something important to tell you before this call is over. Sorry, but I can't keep our date. Can I move it to next Friday so I won't be late? Wow, you are a good poet. Unfortunately, I can't make it next Friday. I've got a date with Mandy that night. <gasps> with Mandy? <laughs> Never mind. Saturday's just dandy. <laughs> from escaping the zoo. We were trying to save you. A city street is no place for a mo- <sighs> a gorilla. <sighs> Pipe down, Missy. It appears my plan is coming together quite nicely. I must congratulate you, Sherman, on a job well done. Thank you, sir. Without your selfless dedication, I would still be living like an animal. This place looks like it's seen better days. Something about this veterinary hospital smells fishy to me. Huh. Check out those paw prints. What kind of animal walks on only two paws instead of four? Another locked door. I guess the only way to go is up. Grab hold. Mental note to self, never climb through a chimney wearing dry clean only clothes. Sam! Clover! The talking animals put us in here, and they did something weird to Jacob and the others. Don't worry. We'll get you guys out in a jiff. Not so fast, ladies. Hey! Pause it off, you creeps! Get comfortable, girls. This is your new home from now on. I don't know what you think you're doing, pal, but I wouldn't count on us being in here for long. I am not your pal. My name is Dr. Fox, and what I think I'm doing is empowering animals to rise up against the humans who've kept them in cages for so long. Um, excuse me, am I the only one who thinks it's a tad ironic that this wacko's name is Dr. Fox? Is it your DNA mixed with Sherman's? 
credit my ingenious DNA transformer, which allows animals to assimilate their DNA with mine, thus increasing their brain power. Now, I'll transfer my DNA to this ordinary lab mouse. Who are you calling ordinary? Impressive, is it not? It also works in reverse. That is to say, I can administer animal DNA to humans. So you turned Jacob and the others into animals? That's just cruel! Now, go forth and carry out our mission! There's a new mission now, Dr. Fox, to put all humans in cages, but not before turning all of you into animals. Wait, this isn't fair! I liberated you! My brothers, time to free our friends and embark on total domination of the human race. Turn them all into animals. Apparently, the animal's aggression is a side effect Fox didn't count on. <coughs> Easy does it, you brute! It'll all be over soon. <coughs> what I would have done if I oh, looks like you were administered a little canine DNA uh, what am I going to do now I have a date with David coming up we'll deal with it later right now we have to stop those animals Shaman, it's great to finally be liberated. Don't mention it. Power to the animals! Animals will rule the earth! 
surprise, Alex. Now let's return the rest of the animals to normal. And you too, Clover. <sighs> Congratulations, girls, on another job well done. The whole experience made us realize how unhappy the animals were in their cages. I'm glad they decided to turn the zoo into a nature preserve. Now everyone is happy. Everyone except Clover, that is. I guess I have no choice. I have to call David and finally cancel our date. Hello? Hi, David. It's Clover. Listen, I have some bad news. So do I. I don't know how to tell you this, Clover, but I have to cancel our date. You do? Yeah, I forgot that I volunteered to work at the Beverly Hills Animal Shelter today. Sorry. I can't believe it! I feel so, so rejected! Well, gotta go. The animals are waiting. David? Wait! Don't go! I can't take this kind of rejection! <laughs> of a problem, sir. I'm afraid your books are overdue. The problem is yours, lady, because I ain't paying no fines. But that's our policy. Too bad. Tragically, you cannot, though you three will be traveling to England. England? But I can't! I have a very important, possibly life-altering video to star in. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to wait. Right now, I have an assignment for you. In the city of Liverpool, there have been a rash of odd occurrences. People's personalities have suddenly changed. Observe. This mild-mannered librarian started acting like a professional wrestler. <laughs> And this prominent surgeon can't stop dancing. And this army general now treats his officers like a kindergarten class. Freak? Especially since some of these people are very important. Then I guess we better find out what's causing this to happen fast. Precisely. And now for your gadgets. You will be using laser lipstick, earring communicators, the hair pick lock pick, suction cup bottomed go-go boots, and bags. Bags? 
vapor-emitting gloves. Wear them at your own factory risk. Ew! Nast! Indeed. And now you're off. Ah. As am I. Ah. So, Anson, remember, my name is Clover, and your search is over. You found your M-Channel guest gal. I'm hipper than hip, hopper than hop. I walk the walk, and baby, I talk the talk. That was awesome, Clover! Thanks! Now all I have to do is send in the tape and keep my fingers crossed. Good, because right now it's spy time. Um, are you sure you're a librarian? Because, sister, you are way buff. I wasn't until last Thursday, the day my whole life changed. What do you mean? What happened? I was working at the library when I saw this bright light. Then all of a sudden, I wasn't a wimp anymore. I was a wrestler. It was amazing. I'm afraid I don't follow. The only thing I lifted for was books and my afternoon cup of tea. Now I can bench 150. I have never matched tomorrow night against some bloke from Kensington. Want to come? Sounds like a blast, but unfortunately, we'll have to take a rain check. Suit yourself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go work on my abs. <laughs> What a freak show. I mean, how often do you meet a wrestling librarian? Yeah, about as often as you meet a high school girl involved in international espionage. Okay, bad example. Hey, check it out. Pro wrestler Birmingham Brawler quits. Wants simpler, quieter life. He probably got dropped on his head one too many times. Huh? Either that or his personality's changed. What are you saying, Sammy? That this is way too weird to be a coincidence. Yes, well, wrestling was my old life, you see. Now I prefer a good book. But you're like the Birmingham brawler, dude. A butt-kicking powerhouse of strength? Hmm? Oh, yes, well, I was the Birmingham Roller until last Thursday when I discovered Trollope, Emily Bronte, and Balzac. You don't happen to know the head librarian at the Liverpool Library, do you? Why, no, but I'd so love to meet her. We probably have a great deal in common. Well, thanks for your time. Keep digging on those books. Oh, yes, I shall. Well, cheerio, my dears. Just when I thought the first freak show was good, the second one was even better. It's like the game we used to play in nursery school, opposite day. You're absolutely right, Alex. It's like they've switched personalities. But how is that possible? Especially since they don't even know each other. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. It's totally amazing. Even in the most heinous of tweeds, I still look fabulous. So, what are we looking for exactly? The librarian's date book. I want to know what's so special about last Thursday, and what her connection is to our wrestler. Hmm. Huh? According to this, she met with, uh, Dr. Gray on Thursday morning. Says here he's a shrink. He treats doctors, generals, teachers, and even celebrities like the Birmingham Brawler. Bingo! We have our connection. It's time to pay the good doctor a visit. Okay, so this is like the opposite of a normal place to live? Shrinks are so dramatic. Looks like nobody's home. I say we let ourselves in. Functional. <laughs> 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 
Okay, let's split up and see what we find. Use your ear and communicators to stay in touch. Well, besides the criminally tacky decor, everything looks pretty normal to me. Same here. How about on your end, Alex? Just a stuffy room filled with books. Hmm? Come to think of it, that wrestler would love it here. <laughs> Alex? Alex, are you okay? She's not answering. Let's find her. <laughs> Sammy? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, this is so not good. <laughs> I went over the falls in the barrel, caught the hoodlum on his fancy boat, and now he's shut away for years. Oh, my, what a story. How thrilling. Oh, excuse me, Your Majesty. I'll be just a minute. Hello? Jer, it's Clover, and I have a big-time problem. Alex and Sam just disappeared. I need you to help me ASAP. <laughs> yes, but I'm afraid that might not be possible just huh? this instant. I not possible? Hello? If you don't get here quick, I may be the next to vanish. And then it's goodbye, M-Channel, goodbye, Anson, and goodbye, perfect life. <laughs> Calm down. I have your coordinates. I'll be there as soon as I can. Everything all right? <laughs> oh, yes. Right as rain. Say, do you mind pointing me in the direction of the loo? Desperate times call for desperate measures. So, what is this place? The home of our prime suspect, Dr. Gray. He's switching the personalities of his patients. We just don't know how or why. Hmm. Very interesting. If by interesting you mean gaudy, then yeah, I'm with you. Not the decor, Clover. I'm talking about that. What is it? A pendant. The kind used in hypnotherapy. It's really heavy, and not in the cool 60s way. Well, that's because it's filled with some sort of circuitry. I wonder what this button does. It activates huh? my latest research tool. The highly potent and highly controversial behavioral adjuster. Dr. Gray, I presume. Huh? It allows me to alter the persona of anyone I see fit. So far, I've only used it on my annoying patients, but I assume that it works just as well on intruders. So, what is your deal? Why are you messing with people's personalities? Because I'm sick of listening to them complain. I figure if they learn to walk in each other's shoes, maybe they'll see life with a whole new perspective. Plus, it's a great deal of fun. Okay, kind of an extreme approach to therapy. Sometimes it's necessary to be extreme. In fact, since my experiment's going so well, I'm planning on going global, starting with the President of the United States. I think he could learn a lot from a rodeo clown. You'll never get away with it. We'll see about that. Get rid of them! <laughs> Attitude adjustment. 
I so can't believe the nerve of you. I mean, talk about a major loser. Jerry, please. That kind of talk isn't going to alter our present predicament. Speaking of predicaments, things are about to get a lot worse. will be teeming with rats. They may starve for days. Enjoy the psychological torture. Huh? Okay, ew, guide me with a spore. This is seriously groaning. Unhand me, you vile creatures. Mercy, this is repugnant. I don't know which is scarier, the rats or those two switching personalities. Me neither. Clover, laser lipstick is in your pocket. Brilliant thinking, Samantha. Huh? Ah. <laughs> awesome! Now it's your turn, girlfriend. <gasps> <laughs> Thanks, Clover. Uh, I mean, Jerry. Oh, you're quite welcome. No problem. Okay, I can't stand another second of this. We have to find that demented doctor and switch you back right now. Huh? Oh, for the love of Pete. Who could be phoning at a time like this? Yes, hello. Ah, delightful. I absolutely will. See you then. Well, it seems I got that Anson Carter gig. They've requested my presence in Los Angeles immediately. But what about your situation? You know, the fact that you're acting like a 50-something English guy? Char, she'll just have to deal, because right now the three of us need to jet to DC before the press becomes a rodeo clown. <laughs> Jerry here. Oh, no. I, like, totally forgot. I'll be there in a jiff. Later, someone from the palace. It's nighting time. I guess that just leaves me and you. <laughs> huh? Security. Hmm. Sorry to barge in on you like this, sir, but it's an emergency. Yeah, an evil shrink's about to turn you into a rodeo clown. Did you say a rodeo clown? Well, this is just plum crazy. Trust me, crazy doesn't even begin to describe this guy. Good evening, Mr. President. It's time for your counseling session. What no glorious name are those? The shoes you'll soon be walking in. See what I mean? He's way loony. That's right. And now we're here to kick your butt. <laughs> Tickled pink? Okay, interesting lingo. So, uh, you ready to play some videos, guest VJ? Indubitably. Ah, what's this awful din? <laughs> Excuse me? This video. Don't tell me kids actually like this rubbish. This rubbish is fried garbage, and they're number one on the charts. Well, I must say their name is quite appropriate. Ah, well, is there anything you do like, Ms. Cranky? As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart, Bach. I bet your audience would appreciate it as a welcome relief. Yeah, well, maybe we'll try it in another lifetime. Meanwhile... Oh, bother. Hey, you 
Majesty. <sighs> I am totally sorry I'm late. <sighs> That's quite all right, Jerry. So, like, thanks again for inviting me to hang in your killer digs. I'm royally blown away. It's so Our pleasure. Well, thanks to both of you, then. And major props on deciding to make me a knight. It's like such the unexpected treat. Even better than a shoe sale at the mall. Are you feeling okay, Mr. Lewis? Okay. I'm downright stoked, Queenie. Now let's get this party started. Oopsie. You'll never get away with this. Wanna bet? I guess we better go help the others. Good idea. And in the meantime, my men will take care of this clown. <gasps> so, I wonder how Clover and Jerry made out. Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart. I can't believe those words actually came out of my mouth. It's so embarrassing. What is embarrassing is my behavior at the palace. Not only does the queen now despise me, but my chances of ever becoming a knight are utterly nil. Oh, that's too bad, Jer. Huh? Hmm. Hello? Yeah, that's me. No way! Yeah, totally. Okay, fine. You're so not gonna believe this. Anson, the love of my life, has never gotten as many calls about a guest BJ. Everyone loves the cranky girl. They want me back. Awesome! You can thank me anytime. Uh, no, I don't need to thank you, Jer. I need to switch personalities with you. Where's that behavioral adjuster thingy? Oh, no. No, not in a million years. Come on, Jer! I said no. But, Jer, this is important. Please! all that zoic stuff. All I get is a headache. I don't know. I just read it and then it's like stuck in my mind forever. Kind of dorky, huh? Dorky? More like lucky. Hey, maybe we can grab some sushi tomorrow after school and you could give me a few pointers? Sure. Sounds great. Hurry up, Sam. You're gonna be late for your date with fame and fortune. <gasps> You're right. It's brain buster time. Um, actually, it's hair and makeup time. No girlfriend of mine's going on TV before she's camera ready. <gasps> Today's the day Sammy gets to be on a game show and win Mega Bucks. Sorry, Zach. Gotta go. Is it me, or does the set look much bigger on TV? That's the magic of Hollywood, my dear. Weak Weatherdale! <laughs> Speaking of magic, I can't believe how real you look in person, Wink. Amazing, isn't it? But enough about me. <laughs> I'm here to welcome Sam to the show. Ready to challenge Margie for lots of cash and prizes? Bring it on. Oh, no, quiet, You got me, bucko! <gasps> Winky, is this how the returning champ gets treated? This boss is 85% genuine self for crying out loud! We'll 
take care of it right away, Margie. That's our cue, ladies. Good luck, hon. You're gonna need it. Oh. She seems nice. For 100 points, this famous person is the reason we have sandwiches. That would be... Uh, would be... Margie? Uh, that's gotta be the Earl of Sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich is correct! <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's... It's, um... Is it Ferno Equinox? Oh, correct, Alondo, again! <laughs> is it Shredded Weight? Expense fest. I believe we're due for our mid morning makeup check. Uh, um, is it me or is she a little off course? Off course? She's off her rocker. Come on, we've got to stop her. Hey, what are you doing? How about saving you from total humiliation? This is the boys' bathroom. <laughs> Oopsie. Guess I wasn't paying attention. I forget the makeup check. Let's just get our books and go to class. Oh, come on, you dumb locker, open up. What's the matter? Did you forget your combination? Oh, forget my combination? That's like the dumbest question ever, Clovis. Clovis? Uh, Sam, her name is Clover. That's what I said, Allegra. Um, okay, I was just kidding about the brain sucking thing before. <gasps> Sammy, are you feeling okay? I am fine. Gosh. Figure out why there's no smoothie stand at this mall. Okay, this just went from amusing to 911 call Jerry quick. Serious. Hello, ladies. What seems to be the problem? Sam's the problem. Ever since she was on that Brain Buster show, she's been acting Trey Bizarro. Yeah, forgetting things and spacing out and stuff. She practically walked into the boys' bathroom at school. But Clovis and Allegra saved me. Uh -huh. Yes, I'll have Whoop run some tests right away. In the meantime, you two should check out Brain Drain's ex-contestants. See if anyone else is having forgetfulness problems like Sam. We're on it, Jer. Not just yet. There's still the matter of the gadgets. Today we have... X-ray sunglasses, lipstick lasers, mini smoke bombs, and some newly modified nuclear-powered jet boots. Oh. What's newly modified about them? Glad you asked. This. since he lost on the game show two weeks ago. That's a long time to just sit around and play with your parting gifts. Can I help you? Yeah, we're here to see the professor. We're, um, we're his students. <laughs> well, then you should know that the professor isn't feeling well. It'll only take a sec. We just want to say hi. 
Well, all right, if it'll only take a second. <laughs> Whoa! Looks like the prop had a little problem dressing this morning. It's every morning. Ever since he went on that ridiculous show, he can't remember anything. <laughs> oh, hello, ladies. I'd love to chat, but it's a bit past my bedtime. Nighty night. <laughs> I appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> okay, this is so not good. For the professor or for Sam? For both. We better call Jer. ASAP. Brainwave test number one. Short-term memory visuals. Any news, spies? on an ex-Brain Buster contestant. In two weeks, he's gone from brainy professor to brainless goof. He tried to go to bed inside a clock. Oh, my. How's Sam doing? Sam? Oh, well, she's... <gasps> oh, my. Tara, what's wrong? Uh, well, nothing to worry yourself about. But you and Alex should investigate the game show set properly. Uh, Ta-ta. <laughs> You seem kind of hungry. And this is the famous Brain Buster set where everybody's favorite waitress, Margie, goes for $10 million in tomorrow's Battle of Geniuses. Wow. Now, follow me to the studio's famous Cowboy Western set. Okay, 10 minutes till the next tour. Let's get to work. We should start with Wink's podium. Looks like this podium is more than just a place for Wink's cue cards. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Brain Busters. Okay, that's weird. What's weird? Pictures of brains? I don't get it. Red trains into blue. to be trusted. Hey, you! Uh, hey, what do you two think you're doing? <gasps> Looks like the next tour came early. What are we gonna do? Start with plate tectonics. <laughs> Sam, are you okay? <laughs> Sam, there you are. Marvelous. Hey, let's go, buddy. Yeah, let's go, buddy. The lady doesn't know you. Oh, no, no, no. You misunderstand. I'm Sam's uncle. Uncle, uh, buddy. Yes, that's it. Sam called me to pick her up. Ready to go, dear? Oh, a three-headed man on a donkey! <laughs> Game show report, ladies? Yeah, Wink's a thing. Pardon me? Poor Sam's been brain drained, Jer. The contestant capsule sucks out a player's intelligence and makes them forget answers. Any idea what happens to the drained intelligence? Security guards came before we could find out. We're gonna have to sneak back in. Any news on Sam's test? Sam? Oh, uh, Sam's perfect. Just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she even took a little walk this afternoon. Time to open a capsule. 
and see what we can find. Hopefully, it'll be Sammy's brain. something you can buy in a store, is it? Excuse me, but sucking out innocent people's brains is like majorly evil. Wow, evil, sure. But Winky and I realized you got to bend a few rules to become rich and famous. And powerful. After tonight's battle of the geniuses, Margie's brain power will be that of a thousand supercomputers. We will be unstoppable. First, rulers of all television. Then, rulers of the world. Plus, <laughs> we get ten million Macaroonies. That's right, sweet stuff. Ew! <laughs> Ew, gross! Like we aren't being tortured enough already. Ooh, the show beckons. Unfortunately, there's not enough oxygen for you to make it until the first commercial. <laughs> bye bye, ladies. <laughs> Divide and conquer round, geniuses. I give you the division problem. You give me the answer to conquer your opponents. And here we go. What number equals the year the spirally grooved rifle barrel was introduced divided by 10 to the negative fifth?
today's grand prize, losers! You're sure this will work, Jer? Oh, yes. With Sam and Margie switching capsules, Margie will be the brain drain contestant this time. day at the sushi bar. Oh, hey, forget it. It's history. Besides, I found another tutor. Another tutor? That's right, Sammykins. Zack needs a study buddy with half a brain. Someone who knows the difference between a hand towel and a hand roll. Bye-bye! <laughs> half a brain is right. Mandy's about as sharp as a week old nail file. It's okay. She can have huh? it. I mean, really, who wants to go out with a guy who would fall for Jerry's lame, look, a three-headed man on a donkey trick? I heard that, ladies. Microchips were stolen. Freaky! Well, it could be if the chips were to fall into the wrong hands. From what I understand, they're quite powerful. Then I guess we'd better hurry up and find out where they went. Indeed. And now for your gadgets. <gasps> Infrared motion detector sunglasses, expandable table bungee belts, titanium drill heel boots, retractable razor faux nails in cosmic blue, and an electromagnetic field disperser walk map. Awesome! I can listen to music and kick back 
by girls, or as they say in the military, shove off. <laughs> Are the AI microchips? Affirmative. And there's no sign of forced entry into the base? That's correct. Just a small hole blown in the side of the building. Way too small for anybody to squeeze through. Unless the thieves were mice. <gasps> what? Like weirder things haven't happened? Any idea why someone would want to steal this stuff? Maybe to build a robot? Maybe to build some kind of smart weapon? Some similar chips were stolen about a year ago. Let's spread out and look for clues. <laughs> Our standard issue GI combat helmet. Only really tiny. Huh. All of a sudden, Alex's mice theory doesn't sound so dumb. Thank you. Let's show it to Jerry. Hmm? Maybe he can shed some light on things. It's an accessory for a line of action figure toys. Limited edition high end soldiers called Combat Chuck and Combat Betty. Let me get this straight. Whoever broke into the base brought toys with them? It would appear that way. Is it me or are bad guys just getting more and more pathetic? So, where can we find these combat chucks and combat bennies? It says here they're only sold at one store. Toy Universe in Burbank, California. Then I guess that's the next place we're going. We'll be in touch, Jerry. You coming, Clover? Right after I check my messages. Ugh, talk about majorly rude. Randy left me 35 messages. But I thought you liked him acting like a servant and tending to your every need. Yeah, I do, but that doesn't give him the right to monopolize my voicemail. I mean, hello? With him clogging up my system, how am I supposed to keep up a normal social life? You're not, because we're on an important mission, remember? Oh, right. The immature bad guy with a toy obsession. Ugh. Let's do it. Cool toys. I don't get what they have to do with the breaking at the base. of artificial intelligence chips. In that case, we should just pack it in. I mean, you know, we probably still have time to hit the beach.
plan. Sweet. Now do you mind telling us who the heck you are? My name's Seth. I'm a toy designer. Oh, let me guess. You're responsible for those evil little creatures back there. I'm afraid so. Man, I think you better re-examine your definition of the word toy. Totally. I mean, what's with huh? this microchip I found on a dinosaur's head? Let me see that. It says here it has an extremely powerful internal electronic energy source and numerous microprocessors. There's only one organization that could have created something like this. The U.S. military. Uh, about a year ago, I borrowed a few chips from them to make my soldiers the most realistic toys on the market. Borrowed? Sounds more like you stole them. Okay, I stole them, but I swear I didn't realize how powerful the chips were. I didn't know they would make the toys act this way. It's like they have minds of their own now. Criminal minds. So you mean this time the toys are the ones that broke into the base? Yeah, they're totally out of control. Wow, I guess that explains the helmet we found and the tiny hole. And now they're using the chips to create an army out of other toys. Why would they do that? I'm not sure. Frankly, I'm kind of afraid to find out. <gasps> Believe me, it wasn't easy. Well, what do you want? I thought you might want a sweater in case you got cold. It's supposed to get pretty chilly tonight. Ugh. Randy, could you do me a mega big favor? Your wish is my command, darling. Could you get lost? Because I'm like totally in the middle of something. Huh? No problem. I'll see you later. Okay, Randy just went from being the best to being a pest. And now on to more pressing matters, like stopping those toys. But we don't know where they are. They may go back to my toy factory. It's kind of their home base. Then we should make sure we're there waiting for them. Let's hit it. So why are we sneaking into Seth's place again? We don't want to take any chances. Yeah. Enough ambushes for one day. Come on, we can go in through here. I can't see anything. Do a quick scan for us, Alex. I think I see something right below us. Let's take them out. must be last season's models, the ones without the chips. Then I guess we got our bungees in a twist over nothing. What the? Take no prisoners! Okay, this is officially surreal! Not to mention embarrassing. That's enough whip out of you, Missy. I'm down, fall in line, suck in that gut! Excellent plan to lead the enemy right into our trap, Commander. But there was no plan. I was... The platoon is ready to carry out the final mission. An assault on the United Countries building. You can't do that. People are going to get hurt. As your commander, I order you to lay down your arms. Huh? Traitor! Seize this prisoner of war! like that. For only being alive for a couple of days, that sergeant really has this bad guy thing down. This is all my fault. I never intended for the toys to be so dangerous. Uh, speaking of dangerous, you think those mini landmines are real? Does that answer your question? Don't worry. I got us into this mess. I'll get us out. Maybe we could swing over to that table? It's worth a shot. Nobody moves! 
field, follow my footsteps precisely. <gasps> that didn't sound good. Okay, when I say go, everyone run. Go! <laughs> Done, ladies. The world is once again safe from renegade toys. Uh -huh. Somehow that doesn't sound as impressive as it actually is. Huh? Hmm? Do we really have to send Seth to jail? He did steal classified military technology. Hmm. But seeing as he saved your lives back there, I'm going to recommend an intense regimen of community service. Hmm. <laughs> Are you allergic to coconut? No, it's not the cookie. 
please. It's our relationship. I just don't think I can date a guy who caters to my every whim. You can't? I know, it sounds totally crazy, but I need to be with someone I can have a real relationship with, not a boy toy. So, you're dumping me? Yeah, but we can still be friends, right? Okay, well, I guess I better go. I need to find another date for the Teen Sickle concert tonight. Huh? Teen Sickle concert? I scored front row tickets. Anyway, I'll see you around. the importance of this intellectually stimulating debate, strange activity occurring at the International Space Organization takes precedence. Hmm. Whoa! Hey, Jer! Welcome to the 21st century. Yeah! Awesome redo! Your office looks really cool now. Glad you like it. Yeah! Now if we could only get him to wear clothes that match. If you're quite finished, aside from your upgraded 7.09 X powder jetpack and bunch stand. <laughs> Releasing immediately. Who said that? What, not who. Gadget lending and distribution interactive system, also known as Gladys. Gladys? Oh, yes. My computerized assistant. I created it myself. <laughs> so he believes. What do you need an assistant for? We do all the work. I assure you, I am quite busy all day long. This is way cool, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. you. Huh? A word of caution. Gladys seems to be developing a mind of her own. Machines don't have minds, Jerry. They're incapable of thought, feeling, or <laughs> aggression. 
Moving right along. On this mission, Alex, you'll have the Scanner Biolab watch. Huh? <laughs> oh. Huh? Sabs, you'll be assigned the Wind Tunnel 9000 Laser Tornado Blast Hair Dryer. Clover, mm. you'll have the Sonic Disintegrator Boom Box. Uh, and Jer, your Gladys seems to be a bit buggy. I said the Sonic Disintegrator Boom Box, Gladys. Negative. Don't negative me. I wired you. I can unwire you. Double negative. I hardwired myself into the mainframe. Wow, she, I mean, it does have a mind of its own. Gladys knows best. You'll also have a super range biodegradable spitball tracker. Your saliva activates the tracking mechanism, but it only lasts an hour, so you have to be quick about it. And it has a bit of a, an aftertaste. And I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts. Finally, I trust you'll appreciate the newest plugin. No way! Way? Thank you, girls. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was that was what? amazing. Thanks very much. Oh. Someone stole our self-launchable satellite. Huh? I think we just fell for the old distraction trick. And with no sign of any clues either. I guess we wait for Jerry's analysis of the substance we collected. <laughs> Scissors, paper, rock! He'll just cheat again. How can you cheat at scissors, paper, rock? You'll find a way. Well, then what do you suggest? I suggest we focus on the mission. How can you think of the mission during a time of major personal crisis? <laughs> Don't you need a special license to wear clothes that ugly? Oh, that lame comeback. Something just came up. I trust you weren't in the middle of anything urgent. Uh, only the most important decision of our lives. Oh, good, then it can wait. <laughs> that sample you provided is an anti-gravity formula the International Space Organization was working on back in the 80s. You whooped us just to tell us that? X powder, hello dear. We're just the press of a button away. Oh, wait a minute, I read about that. The research ended when the astronaut running the program never returned from a mission. 
Newton precisely, and no one else could decipher his exact formula. Uh, X powder, still a viable option. Can I get the formula? I'd like to work on it. Red alert in Sector 4, Jerry. There's another theft in progress in a laboratory that makes guidance systems. But look! All these codes, they're laser points. Whoever it is hasn't even tripped the motion detection alarm. How's that possible? Let me know when you find yeah. out. Wait! We still need to know who should get the bigger room! Well, that's simple. attack impossible. One false move in our presence is revealed. So how'd the thief get past? Now is not the time for grooming, Clover. Okay, first of all, there's never a bad time for proper grooming. And second, we'll just use the mirror to deflect the beams away and clear a path. That's a great idea. Okay, bad idea. I can't believe my mirror failed me. Stand back, I have an idea. I was thinking maybe we could do something like that. Total launch pad deja vu. You and Sam can 
stay here and I'll take the big bedroom back home. <laughs> huh? Uh, nice hair. No wonder he's hiding underground. Na -na 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 blah blah. Astronaut Major Snell, who was head of the anti gravity program and. Disappeared during a mission, never to be seen again. Blah blah blah. <laughs> this Gladys.
gravity? I can't wait to tell know-it-all Gladys we didn't need the laser nail file after all. Ow! I broke a nail. Hmm. <laughs> After saving the world and our lives, it's the least we can give you. <laughs> <laughs> Friends forever! Okay, we got my pack. Score! The best bedroom in all of Beverly Hills, and no one deserves it more than I do. Oh, I wonder if the view is just as great. Nancy! Clover! Oh, guys! Guys! Really, it's not fair that I get the best room. Really, who wants to trade? Guys? Guys? <laughs> Recycling center pays per bottle? <laughs> it! It's on! Clover! I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation why Alex is acting like a total wacko. Right, Alex? I'm sorry, guys. It's just that I need some cash. Dad! After my parents left on vacation, I kind of ran out. Well, what about your allowance? Girl's got needs. New Mega Grip rock climbing shoes, 3D boy candy trading cards, and have you seen the price of latte scented candles these days? Um. Obvious, but what about getting a job? So not an option. A job would mean a boss, and you know I don't do well with bosses. Alex, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times. Now look here, you. I can't understand what's the matter with you. Why you? <laughs> That's a major understatement. <laughs> yeah. Don't you worry your pretty little face. We'll personally make sure that you get a really nice boss. <laughs> about to lose her job. Clack, clack, clack! Excellent. Now get back to work! Easy, Alex. Yeah, don't let him ruffle your feathers. Hello, lady. 
cheese and um, chicken. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, very funny. Was that your one joke of the year, Jerry? Girls, your mission will be to infiltrate an evil chicken farm. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Actually, a number of people have been disappearing. You mean a number of nerdy people? Oh boy, geek rescue. Check it out! I cross-referenced their names and it turns out that they were all logged in at the same cyber cafe. Good work, Sam. You can start there. Now for your guests. Be equipped with infrared motion detector sunglasses, faux snakeskin suction boots, and an electro hairnet. Don't wear this in the shower, you'll get quite a shock. And I added the Magnetron hair curler. Gladys, I thought we had a talk about this. We did, Jerry. I just decided to ignore you. A new device that will attract any metal object to it, like a super powerful electromagnet. Ooh, a hair curler! You read my mind. Well, girls. And good luck. Whoa, it's empty. I guess this place is too geeky, even for geeks. Yeah, we won't need our disguises after all. around through some files, trying to see who used this machine last. Password! Oh, please. I'll show you a password. Up a one more time. You are here. Oh, yeah? I can't think of anything I'd like better. What Alex means is uh, sh she can't think of anything she'd like better than giving away more chicken. <laughs> ah, girls. At the mall, I see. Quelle surprise. Uh, sorry, the Museum of Ancient Boredom was closed today. In any case, the analysis of that spider device is complete. It's some kind of neural interface device designed to form a link between the human brain and a computer. Do we know where it came from? It bears the manufacturing mark of Tetsuo Industries of Japan. The owner, Tetsuo Takara, is known as a genius electronics designer. Hey, I think that guy designed one of my favorite video games, Turtle Ninja Monkey Attack. <laughs> Nerd much? <laughs> Get this. 
If you cross-reference Tetsuo's name with the real estate database, you discover that Tetsuo owns that cyber cafe in Vancouver. Looks like you're off to Japan. Sayonara. <laughs> Who knows? 
knows what they're doing to Clover? What do we do now? Come on! Where's Clover? And where did all the zombie nerds go? It's not like they have dates or anything. This is weird. Okay, this is way past weird. This is officially bizarro.
like I just rode this spine buster a hundred times. Uh, excuse me, Radis, but can anybody tell me what is going on? You don't remember? The icky spiders? The zombies? Nothing? The, the last thing I remember is coming across a powerful new virus when I was surfing the web. We better get Whoop to hunt down that virus before this happens all over again. No doubt. I've had my fill of battling techno geeks. Oh. No offense. <laughs> what? Just drag and drop the file into the new folder and there you go. Your own website. Wow. Like, I never thought it would be this. Oh, hey, we're sorry you got fired from your job in the mall, Alex. Uh, chicks like you deserves better. <laughs> yeah, we know you were an exceptional employee. <laughs> Who cares? This new tutoring job is way better. After our last mission, I'm practically a computer expert. And the best part is I'm in charge. There's no boss telling me I'm late or to stop gossiping because I'm the boss. Uh, Alex, what do I do? No problem. Just press this and this. Ah! Help! Help! This isn't supposed to happen! Where's the boss when you need one? You know, it might not be too late to get your chicken soup back. Come on, don't get your feathers ruffled. <laughs> the doors down. Hmm. Guess they should have ordered another truckload of those new computers. Come on, girls. While we're young, I've got a schedule to keep. Easy, Clover. We need to fuel up before we go power shopping with you. Extra large, double espresso, triple sugar. That's some serious fueling up. Right on time. Okay, you guys chill while I go on a few dates. What? Uh, a few dates? I thought we were going shopping. This will take all day. No, it won't. Trust me. It's called hypersonic dating. Hyper what? Who dating? It makes speed dating look like a long-term commitment. Huh? I'll be done in a sec. So, what's your sign? I'm sad. Uh-huh, okay. Thanks. Uh, and what kind of music do you like? Um, wow, me too. On a date, would you rather go dancing, rollerblading, or stay in and watch a movie? Take your time. <laughs> Time's up. Clover hmm. <laughs> is gonna be through a year's worth of guys before the day is out. She's gonna be through before I'm done with my lawn tape. That's it. Let's go shopping. I hope she doesn't mean hypersonic shopping. So, how'd the dates go? Great. Boys number three, nine, and 14 all get second dates. <gasps> I'm gonna date all of them for an entire minute to get to know them better. So, you could have a new boyfriend by lunch and break up with him by dinner time and make up with him before the mall closes. Isn't this the best? <laughs> Purple 
cloud, I might add. Did you notice anything about that gadget he used on us? It was almost an exact copy of the Wind Tunnel 9000 Tornado Blast hairdryer. I better call Jerry. Okay, either my ex powder isn't working or Jerry's not answering. Ugh, hasn't he heard of call waiting? It's like he's living in the past. We'll just have to go to Whoop and see him in person. <laughs> Jerry's giving Whoop a facelift and forgot to tell us. Hey, check out the weird new kind of rollerblades. Alex sets the old kind. Jerry must be disguising Whoop as a roller rink. See? Always living in the past. Still no answer on the X powder. You think he shut down Whoop and went on vacation? Let's find out. without telling us? That would mean we're fired! So instead of firing us in person, he just stops calling? Oh, he is such a boy. Forget it, Sam. He's not going to answer. I'm trying to tap into the police network. Sam, this is no time to file a missing person report. This is bigger than just Jerry. Whoop is missing. And I bet that disco van in the purple cloud has something to do with it. Here it is. That freaky van has been involved in two robberies. Both at electronics stores. So they're targeting electronics. Good. At least we know where to expect them to hit next. <laughs> Stakeouts are so boring. I know. I'll set up some more hypersonic dates. Ugh. That'll take longer than the dates themselves. What's the deal? My phone is cutting out. Cool, they're turning off. It's starting again. for the mothership to pick you up. Oh, Mandy? What? I'm Phoebe, but I like that name. Maybe I'll name my first daughter Mandy. <laughs> Stop messing with us, Mandy. What happened to Beverly Hills, and what is up with your hippie get -up? Don't be such a square man. Fashion is just a lot of superficial jive. Here, I wrote a column about it in the school paper. 
Peace! It's like we're on another planet. Not another planet, another time! Check out the date on this paper. It's 1975. <gasps> we're in the 70s? That means no cell phones or CDs or personal computers. It's like prehistoric times. And all the guys I'm hypersonic dating, they're not even born yet. Guys, calm down. That van must have jumped through some kind of time portal and we did too. That means we can get back to our own century. But in the meantime, let's not attract any more attention. How do I look? <laughs> can you say groovy? Not bad. Styles may come and go, but I look fabulous in just about anything. <laughs> oh, I wonder if the X powder works on the car. Hey, it does work. Cherry makes the best gadgets. The tracker says the van is this way. Take a left into this parking lot. It looks like the time machine is at a loading dock in the back, so we'll go in the front. What's this? Too big to be a cell phone. Eight-track cassette. It's like a pin of CD. This is a phone. Whoa, Alex, look out! <gasps> Alex, are you okay? Get me out of this weird chair! All these '70s gadgets are just like gadgets, whoop gadgets. Yeah, they're just slightly ahead of their time. <laughs> those jive turkeys on the flip side give you any trouble? Look, mellow out, man. Everything's out of sight, all right? Got enough groovy parts for hundreds of far-out gadgets, and the new time-space fog emitter works even better than a prototype. Right on. Slime me some skin, man. Right on. <gasps> what are they talking about? There's something creepy about that driver. I don't know what it is, but he's... With a really huh? bad 70s look. Hey, who are these foxy ladies and how'd they know my name, eh? Dig it! They're evil spies from the future! But don't worry. Mm. Our disco chicks got all the kung fu moves. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, we're trained in kung fu. <laughs> to change the mood with my mood ring. No way, Jerry! You're not using a gadget on us! <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Jerry? Stop us with lame 70s music? <laughs> Jerry, what's going on? Don't you know us? Yeah, we're like your best and cutest Whoop agents. Actually, since we're in the past, you should be starting Whoop right about now. Look, if you know about the World Organization of Human Protection, then you must be from the future, since BG and I haven't started Whoop yet, man. BG? Boogie Gus, the boss man of Whoop and genius inventor of time travel. Yeah, what's with that? Why are you stealing technology from the future? To get a jump on you evildoers, of course. That was BG's idea, too. I'll take it from here, man. Get the van ready so we can book it out of this time zone. Hey! <gasps> Listen, Booger Gus, you may have Jerkon, but we know he's the one that started Whoop. Yeah, and frankly, you don't look smart enough to invent a time machine. <laughs> Whoop, the World Organization of Harmon People, is my own far out and solid idea. But you're right, Jerry did invent the time machine, and I was smart enough to steal it. I'm from the future, like you, and I worked at Whoop too. As part of the custodial staff, I snagged the time machine when no one was looking and brought it back to the 70s. Why'd you pick such a lame decade to travel to? To get to Jerry before he started the real whoop. Foxy and intelligence. Right on. Besides, the seven is rule because that's when disco started. I 
was the greatest disco dancer ever. Check it! Geeky, but not bad. So you're bringing disco back to the future? That is beyond evil. And beyond tacky. <laughs> and I'll be the only one with Jerry's gadgets. Um, what's so terrible about a thick cushy rug other than that yucky color? I mean... That is the deepest pile shag rug in the world. Once you're in deep enough, you won't be able to breathe. <gasps> well, got a boogie. Maintain, ladies. See ya. What do wanna be? Ew! We're going to be killed by an ugly carpet? Would you feel better if we were killed by one of Jerry's own gadgets? <gasps> Jerry's gadgets! Wait, I picked up his mood ring during the fight! I got it here somewhere. Um, hurry, Alex! Uh, um, I think I got it! <gasps> now, how does it work? <gasps> <laughs> nice work, Alex, but we're still stuck in the past. BG and Jer must have taken their time machine to the present. No, wait! This looks like the thingy that came out of the van. <gasps> it must be the prototype time machine that Jerry was talking about. Well, be the Stone Age. Ready? Let's go! Uh, no, no, we're not still on the set of these, are we? Welcome to Studio Whoop, Foxes. Oh no, it's the evil spies. <laughs> My mini new mood ring. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <gasps> 
Back to normal, but where's Jerry? Also back to normal. Oh, the old Jerry back! <clears throat> yes, the old Jerry. Yes. Shame I couldn't keep my hair. <laughs> the afro was not a good look for you, Jer. Okay, just so we're clear, we're in our own time now, and everything's like it was? Everything is as it should be. The time travel project has been discontinued. Or rather, it was never started. It's all rather complicated. As I said, everything is as it should be. Though I did keep the mini nuke mood ring. Rather a charming little gadget, don't you think? Uh. <laughs> Hurry, dear. I want to get some organic hemp underwear before they're sold out. Mom! Would you start living in the 21st century already? Nice to see everything's back to normal at the mall. Even Clover. Hey, Clover, don't you have to be on, like, 50 dates in the next half hour? Yeah, what happened to hypersonic dating? Oh, please, that is so five minutes ago. Ultra slow dating is the way to go now. I'm spending all week with Eric. Mm. Wow, when does it start? It's already started. Eric is just two hours late. Two hours? And you're not mad? Oh, please, of course not. There's no need to rush our relationship. Now, I don't want to be rude, but you know, I'm on a date. Okay, well, we'll just go ultra slow shopping then. I feel so out of touch. If I were to go out with a boy, how would I even know what kind of date we're on? I guess we're just a couple old fashioned girls, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> of our new members' dinner is quite a challenge. But perhaps we can cover up the basketball hoops with a few tasteful facades? Brilliant, Randolph. Facades would be perfect for covering something up. Why does Sam have to join every nerdy club at school? Uh, yes, Sam. I agree that Japanese blowfish is an exotic dish, but hardly appropriate for guests who didn't ask to risk their lives at dinner. <gasps> now, after dinner, the club will want to enjoy some music and dancing. Okay, now this is definitely my department. Check this out. Uh, no doubt, but I think that on a formal occasion, we class members might want to enjoy something a little more traditional. Like the tango. Care to give it a try? Uh, My fault. <laughs> I should have known you wouldn't be familiar with the proper steps to a real dance. Hmm. I am so, so uncultured. You are not, Sam. Come on, let's blow this snooze fest and have some real fun at the Beverly Hills Glamour Fair. Glamour Fair? So everyone can laugh at me? No, I don't think so. I am not showing my face in public again until I am presentable. We are going to charm school. <laughs> Remember, Samantha, proper elocution and good posture are the keys to making a good impression. Repeat after me. May I offer you a cup of orange Darjeeling tea? You try. May I offer you a cup of orange Darjeeling tea? Try it again. Only with your nose held higher in the air. May I offer you a cup of tea? May I offer you a cup of tea? <laughs> Better. Now for posture. We'll use this Beverly Hills phone book to practice exemplary locomotion. 
These exemplary manners are so bogus. It's like it's not even Sam. Oh, I know. She's only doing it to charm Randolph. He should be trying to charm her. May I offer you a cup of orange Darjeeling tea? Now, where did they go? Ladies, it isn't polite to leave without bidding adieu. Oh, well, spies, this is a first. I seem to have interrupted you at high tea. Not at all. May I offer you a cup of orange Darjeeling? Why, yes. And my compliments, Sam. I rather like this new persona of yours. Really? You can tell I'm different? Absolutely. You remind me a bit of my mother. <gasps> oh. <laughs> now, about today's mission. Not much to go on, I'm afraid. Simply a rash of incidents involving petty vandalism, beatings with clubs, a spontaneous primitive behavior, if you like. You're sending us on a mission to round up a few misbehaving yahoos? Must be a slow day on the world domination front. Although the incidents are relatively minor, they are becoming frequent enough for Whoop to be concerned. In fact, there seems to be an incident in progress at the Beverly Hills Mall. <gasps> Our mall? Yes. You'd better get there as soon as you have your gadgets. Gladys? Today, you'll be using fashionable heat sensor motion detector sunglasses. Make sure you have the laser nail file and the tornado blast hair dryer. And you'll be prepared for all kinds of weather, including acid rain. No! Get it. Compact, collapsible, Teflon-coated, armored umbrella. Right then, off you go to the mall. And remember, no shopping. You're on duty. Aww. We're too late. Our mall's been destroyed. What happened? A riot? Looting? Sounds like whoever did this is still around. I don't see anything. Oh, wait! There! By the shoe store! Hey, you big ape! I don't think they have your size! Scale, though I guess not stop saying much. Ah! Hey, you big ignoramus! Don't you know hair pulling is impolite? Let her go! Or. LA, make him something! He's pulling my hair out by the roots! Ow! Don't worry, Sam! I can outwit this ape man! Oh, are you okay, Sam? Nothing a weave can't fix. This goon got that spear from a little guy who didn't look like the others. But I don't see anyone now. He must have cleared out with the rest of the mob. Then this is the only eight men we have left. Let's get a look at him. <gasps> it's Randolph! It is Randolph! So do we take him back to Wolf for questioning or drop him off at the zoo? Alex! Can't you see the poor boy's not himself? Looks like he had a reverse makeover. <laughs> You guys have Randolph on a leash. <laughs> Enough clowning around. I'm calling Jer. Good afternoon, spies. Anything to report? We snagged one of the mall wreckers, Jer. But get this. He's a boy at school that Sam's hot for. Really? I would have thought that Sam would be associating with a better class of people than a common hooligan. He is not a hooligan. He's president of CLASS. A well-mannered, sophisticated 
human being who likes to eat wax fruit. Let's have a look at him, shall we? It appears this Randolph person is a caveman. What? According to the measurements I've just taken, particularly the size of his cranium, he has all the physical characteristics of a Neanderthal. But we just saw him yesterday, and he was the most sophisticated guy in school. So someone's shrinking smart people's brains to turn them into primitive cavemen? Why would anyone do that? Good question, Clover. Do you have any other clues? Well, there's the spear he was carrying. Not a very modern-looking weapon, is it? Here it is. This spear looks exactly like the one at the anthropology department of Beverly Hills Community College. Then get to the school right away and see if there's a connection. I'll have Randolph brought to Woop to see if we can reverse the brain shrinking process. Uh, I hope you can for Sam's sake, or the class dinner is going to be really interesting. I hope we solve this case before the glamour fair is over. I want to ride that new coaster, the curling iron. This is the office of the guy in charge of artifacts, Professor Link. I'm not sure this guy is even a real professor. I mean, look at all these bogus diplomas. The Mail Order College of Micronesia. Couldn't he get into Tijuana Tech? Actually, Link's been rejected by just about everybody. Harvard, Princeton, that exclusive club for people with high IQs. Listen to this from the Journal of Anthropology. Professor Link's theories don't even qualify as third-rate scholarship. If he were a first-year student, Link would probably fail just for bad spelling. Poor guy, I kind of feel sorry for him. Looks like he's smart enough to lose a TV quiz show. Hey! This guy could almost be the one I saw with the spear in the mall. In which case, he's met Professor Link before. Unless that little guy is Professor Link. But why would he keep a picture of himself losing? I don't know. Same reason he kept all these rejection letters. There's definitely something weird about him. Huh? Hmm. Aha! It's a real cave. Or at least a real artificial one. Wow, it looks like something you'd see in a museum. <laughs> it's so authentic. These stone tools, the cave paintings, those primitive people. Yeah, it looks like they're making real weapons by a real fire. <laughs> they are real, and so are their weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got ourselves out of tougher spots before. We can get out of this one, right? Maybe we don't have to. Look! <sighs> Professor Link, I presume? Great idea scaring the caveman with that dumb costume, Link. You're smarter than you look. That's Professor Link. And soon I shall be the smartest man in the world. Grab them! I think we found our bad guy. <laughs> we might have guessed you were behind this if it wasn't for all those bogus degrees. Yeah, all the bad guys we know are real evil geniuses, not fake ones. And snappier dressers. Where did you find that bad guy outfit? At a rummage sale? You underestimate me. Well, no one will ever do that again. Not when I devolve the entire human species. Uh, okay, I'll bite. Why? After years of rejection by the academic world, I tried to make myself smarter by expanding my brain capacity with this. Unfortunately, my microwave emitter had the opposite effect. And I decided to become the most intelligent person on the planet by making everyone else dumber. That's clever. Not very ambitious, but clever. Look around you. These cretins were once the physics faculty at the Beverly Hills Community College. Don't believe me? I'll give you a little demonstration. This is the head of the astronomy department. By using the jumbo 
version of my device. I'll have Beverly Hills in the Stone Age by the end of the day. And it won't be long before I devolve the entire world. Except for me, of course. We're gonna be cave girls, eating raw meat and wearing animal skins? Oh, don't worry. I have other plans for you three. You're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. Perhaps some future paleontologist will discover your fossils in about a million years or so. Ta-da! We've got to think of something quick. These fumes are starting to make me woozy. We've got the tornado blast hair dryer. I could use it to blow us away from the pit. Whoa, we can just cut our hands free. Hey, I picked up a flint arrowhead during the last fight. What? I thought it would make a pretty necklace. Now let's stop Link before Beverly Hills is filled with hordes of empty-headed idiots walking around with trashy clothes and vacant stairs. Listen, that must be the sound of Professor Link's brain shrinking device. He's already started it up. But from where? It's got to be somewhere up high. There. The Ferris wheel at the Glamour Fair is the highest point around. Let's go. <laughs>
Um, Jerry, you're a caveman too? Um, not quite. Fortunately, the brain shrinking device was unable to penetrate Wu headquarters, and the only staff affected were those outside on coffee breaks, including me. But you did save the rest of Southern California from being sent back to the Stone Age. Oh, oh, I have a question. Um, oh, yeah, uh, me stay this way? Happily, we found a way to reverse the brain shrinking process. It's been successfully tested on Randolph, and everyone affected by Link's Ray should make a full recovery. With no memory of being cavemen, of course. Oh, then Randolph's okay! Um, and your buddy Alex, in case you care? Well, yeah, of course! Oh. Good evening. So glad you could come. Lovely dress. Welcome to the C-L-A-S-S dinner. You can save the proper lady act for Steffi Randolph. Speaking of which, where is Randolph? I haven't seen him yet. He's supposed to be taking care of the music. This should get those uptight new recruits to loosen up. Randolph! You're not the same old you! Nope! The stuffy, boring old Randolph is gone for good! I don't know why I kept my wild side bottled up for so long! Come on, Sam! Let's dance! Ah, uh, maybe later. Suit yourself! Looks like Randolph still has a little bit of residual caveman in him. It's nothing a few charm lessons can't cure, right, Sam? Yeah. 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 I don't think the old Randolph is ever coming back. Hey, Randolph! Let me show you how to really dance! I hope you brought your steel toed boots! <laughs> <laughs> okay, in case you like completely flaked, here's a little update. So, one sec we're just these normal high school girls slash spies. The next sec, Jer tells us that we're being promoted to regular high school girls slash super spies and being sent to a totally tricked out, totally top secret training facility. Pretty major, right? Wrong! Besides the part where we meet a fellow spy hottie named Dean and got to hang with some cool virtual whoop instructors, the experience pretty much reeked. Not only were we viciously attacked by an angry ballroom, but our host Terrence turned out to be a big time baddie. He totally captured Dean and stuck him in some weird gel cage thingy, then asked us to eliminate Jerry and retrieve some grossy microchip he keeps hidden on his body. All I can say is, rude much? realign my spine. Okay, girls, enough chit-chat. If we want to ditch Terrence, find Jerry, and save Dean, we're gonna need a plan. Mm. Not gonna be much of a planning sesh with that mega loser Terry watching our every move. The only name-calling should be from Jerry right before his demise. So, ladies, please, less ruminating, more eliminating, or old Terrence will begin the process of elimination with your chum, Dean. Please help me. <gasps> Looks like our planning session is officially trashed. Speaking of trash, come on. Uh. Wait, where are you going? Terrence doesn't like surprises. No sense of smell. Sorry, Clover, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Now let's figure out how to get Terrence off our backs. If only we had a useful gadget instead of these lame hologram lockets. Then we could <gasps> bust a move. 
Maybe they're not so lame. I could try and rig them to project our images so Terry will think we're on a search and destroy mission for Jerry. But really, we'll sneak off and search for Jerry and tell him it's really up with Terry. Exactly. Uh, run that by me again. It's the old bait and switch, Alex. And FYI, it's brilliant. In that case, I say we go for it. Three hologram diversions coming right up. Clover, Alex, and Sam meet Clover, Alex, and Sam. Oh, check it out. I'm even hotter as a hologram. <gasps> I wish I could say the same. What's wrong, Sammy? Me. I'm so blah. Please. Since when do you care about looks? Since right now. I am a total plain Jane. <sighs> this really isn't the time for discovering vanity, Sam. We need to interrupt Terrence's regularly scheduled programming. Remember? Yeah. And I've got an idea. facility training for your promotion. If you took time out for shopping, rest assured you'll be fired. Uh, fine by us, because so far our big promotion has been nothing but a big fat fiasco. Extra wit. Jerry, something's gone wrong. That training facility turned into a torture facility and they've got Dean trapped in a lucite cell. And that whacked out host Terrence, who was supposed to be taking care of us, wants us to take care of you. And by take care, he means eliminate. Terrence, I don't believe it. I take it you know this dude? Let's just say he's a person from my past. Well, this person from your past wants you presently gone. And he wants us to get some microchip from you. Oh my, this is serious. I suggest we go to my home office at once. <laughs> the mess, ladies, uh, but I wasn't expecting company. Cassette tapes? Neon? Wow, Jer, this place is like a total 80s museum. Uh... <gasps> Jeez, Jer, for such a teched out guy at work, you really live in the past at home. Speaking of the past, who's the other kid in this picture? That is my twin brother. What? Hello? Secretive much? Yeah, since when do you have a twin? Duh, since birth, even I know that one. Okay, girls, time to focus. We've got business at hand. Our only hope is to trick Terrence into believing I really did perish by staging an elaborate and convincing attack on me. An attack which will require masterful acting performances by each of you. Cool. A cushioned whooping? Blah, blah, blah. Enough chit chat. Move it or Terrence will lose it! This plan rocks! Totally! Only want the part where we pretend to knock you off the bridge really knock you off the bridge? I will have a bungee cable discreetly connected to my ankle. As for the hidden microchip Terrence requested. Ew! Oh, gross! I'll replace the real microchip with a decoy. Like so. Okay, ew. What's the deal with that thing anyway? There'll be plenty of time for explanations later, I hope. Uh, Just be sure to rip off the birthmark during the chase. 
Lucky me. And give Terence the decoy chip when you head back to the training facility. When will we see you again? I'll join you at the facility, where we will defeat Terence and save Dean. Where's Rest here? Let's go, spies. Not without gadgets, you don't. <sighs> Talk about a stocked fringe. Molecule separating hairspray. Perfect. I could use a change in hairstyle. I wouldn't place that near your head. It'll change more than your hairstyle. A not-so-joyful joy buzzer. How ironic. Sonar Sally with antenna drill. Cool! No, oh, I mean, ouch! <laughs> Better antenna down before putting it in my pocket. And for me, a laser ascot pin. And, of course, X powders. I always keep spares at home. Yes! Now I can try some new not-so-plain-Jane looks. <laughs> well, you look like a couch. No! <laughs> Agreed. Now let's go before Terence discovers your little trick. I think I've learned something with this. I see that trick. They're trying to drive Terence crazy. Perhaps you'll move if I eliminate your dear friend Dean. Hello, spies. Hello, real spies. Come on, girls, let's do this. <laughs> that got their attention. What a perfect day for a leisurely stroll. What is the meaning of this? For you, big trouble. Pardon me? Sorry, Jer, but I've got no choice. I'm taking this microchip and I'm taking you out. And I don't mean for sushi. Alex, you can't do this. I wish I couldn't, but yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Class dismissed. Very angry. After him, spies! 
You were trained better than this. chosen one. Did I mention that Dean is actually a double agent? No way. Impossible. More like way possible. 
Turns out it's more fun to work on the evil side than the good side. And to think I actually thought you were cool. FYI, double agents, doubly uncool. Oh, don't blame Dean. He couldn't resist helping me infiltrate the spy droid project. <laughs> and this chip is the key that will finally get us in. Whatever! Like we care about your dumb droid project. You will when you see how deliciously evil it is. Sorry, pal. We're not impressed by evil. Then why did you hang around that conniving, backstabbing Jerry all these years? Don't you talk about Jerry like that! He was the best! Totally! And he so didn't deserve to go out like Silence! that! Silence! Ah, Jerry got exactly what he deserved. My biggest regret is not being there in person to see his suffering myself. My second biggest regret is having to get rid of such exemplary agents like yourselves. Um, two regrets is a lot for one day. Maybe you should hold off on the get rid of us plan till later? It would be such a shame to lose spies with such style and pizzazz. Especially you, Sam. What, really? You don't think I'm a plain Jane? Duh. With that wild devilish red hair? Hardly. Thanks. And ew! Oh, you won't be thanking Terence for what he's about to do to you. Back in the virtual ballroom. Not good. Very not good. This room spells doom. Come on, guys. Just because last time we were here, the walls caved in, doesn't mean it's over for us, <laughs> does it? Goodbye, girls. As hard as it is to believe, I am sorry it had to end like this. That makes one of us. Unhappy landings! 